All right, Shalom. 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 First and foremost, we want to give all praise, all honor, and all glory to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Kodash. Double honors to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessing and many salutations unto your elect across the four winds of this earth, fulfilling your lots and all truth and all sincerity. We are the Great Millstone Dallas branch, the Great Millstone Dallas camp, coming to you all with another class and session lesson. All right. And uh, what we're going to be delving into today is going to be going into the seed of the serpent. OK, the seed of the woman going to touch up on that. But generally, we're going to touch up on what the seed of the serpent and who I'd rather say who the seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman is. All right. There was a lesson that I did a few days ago touching up on the prince of this world. And um, even even the apostle, he, he responded to it. And there was things that he expounded on. That, um, that um, I should have expounded on earlier, you know what I'm saying? Touching up on just generally when it comes to the prince of this world, it's talking about Esau, Edom, but Satan is also a prince because Esau gets that influence from Satan. All right. Just as you have a Holy Spirit on the right hand side that comes from the throne and wisdom on the right hand side that the elect have. OK, there's also a particular form of information or wisdom on the left hand side too, which still comes from the father at the end of the day, but it comes from his left hand perspective. Right. All right. And on that left hand perspective, with that wisdom, with that energy on the left side, there is somebody, a nation on the planet Earth that possesses that and uses that to fulfill what they're meant to fulfill. All right. And all this is influenced by the spiritual demon Satan. All right. And he has a seed on the planet Earth. OK, since we since we said that, I know we're holding Genesis, the third chapter. OK, but we can actually start at the book of um, Sirach, chapter 24, first and foremost, going in to this Holy Spirit that's sent down in righteousness. OK, and how it, it only possesses okay. a particular nation of people on the planet Earth. OK, what verse you want? It's just uh, Sirach 24 and 8. OK, OK, Con, Con, that's a bet. All right, this is Sirach, chapter 24, verse 8. It says... So the creator of all things gave me a commandment, and he that made me caused my tabernacle to rest. All right, so this me is talking about wisdom. Okay, he that made me. This is the influence that comes from the Heavenly Father's throne that resides within choice, special souls. That's right. Making them different than everybody else, okay? You can also read about this wisdom, all right, in Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter. Okay, going into the laws, statutes, commandments. And when you read that, it goes into how that was going to make us a light so the nations could flow unto it. Okay, so every nation on the planet Earth cannot possess the wisdom on the right hand side. That's right. right. Now, they can be used. The Lord can use them in certain ways to say certain things, perform certain things for the elect to take and grab and add to the arsenal. That's right. Scriptures even say wisdom shall meet thee in every thought. But when it comes to just the wisdom of the Heavenly Father, his inspirational, how he wants things to be done according to his influence, he had placed that wisdom upon a particular nation of people okay. who are the Israelites. Okay? Go ahead, Tasha. And he said, let thy dwelling be in Jacob and thy inheritance in Israel. And thy inheritance in Israel. So this is wisdom. All right. And wisdom was commanded to make her dwelling place in Jacob. All right, and, and dwell with the nation of Israel. Okay, so this is that energy that comes from the Father on the right hand side that we possess. Okay. Go ahead, Tasha. Uh, verse 9 it says, He created me from the beginning before the world, and I shall never fail. Uh, verse 10 it says, In the holy tabernacle I served before him, and so was I established in Zion. Right, there you go. OK, so wisdom is a stat is firmly established in Zion. All right. The wisdom on the right hand side of the Heavenly Father, because anybody can have wisdom in anything. All right. But this is a particular wisdom. All right. This is a particular wisdom, the purest form of wisdom. All right. Whose dwelling is in Zion. And we utilize the wisdom, these laws, statutes, commandments, Yahweh Shai, everything he taught us. This is pure wisdom. And this is wisdom that the Heavenly Father is giving to Israel and we are going to use this wisdom to rule. Okay? okay. Go ahead. And then we can and then we can jump to um wisdom of Solomon seven and then we can jump to Genesis the third chapter okay. going into it. All Matter right. of fact, read that and then we can jump to there and then go back to Wisdom of Solomon seven. Okay. 
Mm. All right, uh, verse 11, it says, Likewise, uh, in the beloved city, which beloved meaning David. Uh, right, the city of David, that's right, David. Jerusalem. You know, he, he gave me rest, and in Jerusalem was my power. There you go. Okay, so Jerusalem's a people before it's a place. That's right. As we should, most of us should have a thorough understanding of Jerusalem being considered a people more than it's a place. Right. So wisdom is resting in the nation of Israel. Even when you go into the name Jerusalem, all right, a lot, and you know, it's the city of peace. But when you go into the meaning of that name, uh -huh. Yarah Shalom, all right, Yarah means fear. But another word, all right, or another way you can explain Yarah is also meaning to teach. Okay. Okay. So when you say Yara, that also means to teach. Yara, teach, shalom, peace. Okay, so the teaching of peace is firmly established in Jerusalem. Right. Okay. And, and Bapusha, if, I, if I may say, that's why I said in that in that verse 11, that's where the power is. Mm -hmm. The power is in the wisdom. The power is in the people that wisdom resides upon. That's right. That's right. Beautiful, beautiful. So we can go to uh, Genesis, the third chapter. All right, and... Just jump straight to verse 14 and we can uh, we can summarize and abridge a little bit of what was transpiring before this whole event or this fiasco had took place. Go ahead, bro. This is Genesis 3 verse 14. It says, And Yahweh, the power said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle. Now, what was the this that the Allahim explained to the serpent? What is the this? That this is going into how he begot the serpent, beguiled Eve. All right. Taught Eve a foreign philosophy that they were not supposed to learn. Okay. That is the this that is explaining. Okay. Now in the scriptures, it goes into eating of the tree of knowledge. All right. And the Christian will have you thinking. And, you know, the reason why they think that is because that's how it's explained in the scriptures. That's right. Okay. But they don't understand the spiritual meaning or the allegoric essence that lies behind this whole situation that it took place. That's right. And again, as while we explained it in, in Sirach chapter 24, you have to have the wisdom on the right hand side to be able to break this down and understand this for what it is. Okay? Because that fruit represents knowledge. Okay? The fruit that they tasted represent knowledge that they were not supposed to take or partake in. Okay? Matter of fact, um, I got a quick precept, and it's in the book of Colossians, the second chapter. It's Colossians chapter 2. And the point, I believe it's in Colossians 2 and 2. And this is also another precept to prove to you that it's not an actual fruit. All right? Because even this wisdom of ours is likened unto wine. That's right. Okay? Just as Yahweh Shai is likened to being uh, the, the vine. All right? Wine is made out of the vine. Okay? So this is the book of Colossians chapter 2. Uh, I thought it was in 2 and 2. Let me see here. It's a quick verse. It goes into taste not nor handle not. Let me see here. Bear with me one sec, y'all. The water for the patience. Thought it was in Colossians 2 and 2. Colossians 2 and 21. So this is Colossians 2 and 21. And it's I'll start at verse 20. But it says, Wherefore, if ye be dead with the Mashiach, from the rudiments of the world, why as though living in the world are ye subject to ordinances? Okay? Now, these ordinances, what do they consist of? Idolatry that's out here. Just everything that you see here. I mean, you got ordinances on the right-hand side, but there's also ordinances on the left-hand side too. And unfortunately, us being in this flesh, all right, we are subject unto these ordinances even on the left-hand side. All right? That's why we need Yahawashai to get us out of here. Okay, but as we're here under these ordinances that are out here, what does he say? Touch not, taste not, nor handle not. All right, so why did he expound on it as being something that's not supposed to be tasted? Remember, we're talking about philosophies and ideas here. Right. Okay, so going into this tree of, this tree of knowledge, and the fruit that Eve ate and Adam ate, all right, that's going into philosophy. And after that philosophy was taken in and we fell as a nation of people, sin was brought forth into the world. That's right. That's Us right. being in this flesh under these ordinances that are out here. And we've got to control ourselves being here. All right. When you read that in Genesis, the third chapter, that was an example of them acting according to the flesh for the first time. And since that was done, we have 
we have control on how to handle ourselves, but as we're here in this flesh, there's only so much control that we do have. That's right. Okay. So, uh, right. Say, uh, Come. Like Moore said in what Isaiah 40 and 15, basically going to basically the other nations are nothing. So mm -hmm. when we, before we got this will, this knowledge, when the Lord put that breath into us, we was walking amongst, you know, the the, uh, the, the rudiments of everyone else. But when he gave that breath, we started walking a certain way. Right. You know, so That's right. as you go through the scripture, you, you realize the Lord, even with, like, say, the, the seed of the serpent, which is uh, Esau, you know, also with the, the other heathen nations, he don't really... You know, give a damn about what they are worshiping and, and, and giving reverence to. But That's when right. we turn and actually give reverence to an idol and not the living power, which is Yahweh, then he actually puts, uh, uh, basically, he basically, what do you say, put a whipping stick on. That's right. He's Absolutely. Putting other nations over us mm -hmm. and showing that basically you are the, the, the salt of the earth. Mm -hmm. You are the power, you know, you know, the sons of the living power, the covenant. But yet we're going to put you in this lower state and put who over you? A serpent. Someone he just put below the, the, the cattle. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Um, man, um, if we can also have one deck, Jeremiah 8, I believe, verse 17. We don't got to get it right now, but um, you just brought up a beautiful point. All right. All right how we're surrounded by these serpents, but you expounded on something beautifully. And before we continue in Genesis, the third chapter, we can jump to Genesis two, mm -hmm. going into that breath that was given. All right. Cause that's that inspiration. All right. And it's a reason why this precept is going to be brought out as we continue to delve into Genesis, third chapter, going into these two seeds mm -hmm. that specified that are going to play significant roles on the planet earth. Okay. Go ahead, bro. Start uh, verse six, Genesis two and six. It says, "But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground, and uh, yeah, uh, the Most High Yahweh formed man of the dust from the ground." And these are the. This is the latter. This is the latter part of the sixth day as well. Mm -hmm. All right. This is the latter part of the sixth day when Adam was created. Right. Okay. And a lot of people think that it was Adam that was first created. They, they take the allegoric, all right, essence of the scriptures right here, literally, right. okay? So again, it makes sense to a certain amount that doesn't have understanding right. to think that Adam was, and was the first one, Eve, Eve was literally created from a rib, surgically removed from Adam, mm -hmm. you know, a snake slithering down this tree of knowledge and they ate this fruit, right. all right? You would think that that was the case if you read it, you know, in the physical sense, okay? Yeah. But we have the Holy Spirit of truth yeah. and understanding to be able to break this down and go into what this is actually saying. So it went into this mist that was before that watered the earth. Got to remember, it didn't rain around this time. Uh, okay, go ahead. And also uh, mm -hmm. in Genesis 1, around the 26, 27 verse, it goes into uh, how he had already made That's right. his image. So That's man right. is already walking upon the ground. Mm -hmm. Be fruitful and multiply. That was the mm -hmm. first commandment that he had gave to his creation. All right. When he created the creatures, man and woman were included within the creatures of the land that was created. Okay. Hold on one sec. Go ahead. Um, we don't want to do too much, but just want to go into this, this part right here with this breath. Genesis 2 and 7. And mm -hmm. The Most High Yahweh formed man of the dust of the ground and breath into his nostril. Now, when you go into that, that uh, dust of the ground, I mean, you got to think about it. It really represents confusion and being in a low state. Mm -hmm. All right. It goes into being in a low state and confusion, all right? And out of that low state, this primitive state, all right, that creation was in, all right, the Heavenly Father had bestowed his breath upon Adam, right. all right? And again, if you read it in a carnal sense, you would think that it was, and this clay figure came a man. No, there was already individuals on the face of this earth, as the brother just beautifully expounded on. And out of these primitive beings, these men that were on the face of this earth, there was a particular one that he rose up and put his breath into, mm -hmm. all right? And as that breath was put into Adam, it didn't just stop there, all right? He laid with his wife Eve, bore children, all right? And out of those children, there were choice individuals, a choice line that that breath was preserved through, That's right. okay? This is the seed of the woman that we're about to expound on and how later on that same breath was preserved and it resides within us right now. That is that wisdom, okay? That's that wisdom that we just read about in Sirach 25. 24. Go ahead, let's um, the water, 24. Go ahead and finish that up, and then we can bring that out in Job 32, bro. Come on. Come on. Back in the middle of verse 7, is it? And Come breath on. into his nostrils, 
The breath of life. The breath of life. All right. Now, what did Yahweh Shai say in John, the sixth chapter? All right. He said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Mm -hmm. So that's how you prove out of many scriptures to prove as pertaining to this breath to show you it wasn't a physical breath. Because the same breath was spoken of by Ezekiel in Ezekiel 37. Really, the Lord, how he had expounded it to Ezekiel. And with that breath, man became a living soul from being those dry bones. Adam was in that spirit. Adam was in that state at a point of time. All right, you see how it was a constant pattern of us being in a low state, breath being breathed. You think about it. Adam, you got the sons of God, and then the fall of the sons of God. You know what I'm saying? And Noah was right there to preserve it. Then later on, you got Noah's seed. Then there was a blank. There was a void of spirituality. I mean, you had certain men that were alive that knew, but there was a void at a period of time. And then Abraham came, and that breath was breathed into Abraham. Okay, same thing happened when you go later on in time. The falling away took place, a void of understanding. People knew things here and there. Letters and such was traded off. Even King James knew they were Israelites. They called themselves Jacobites. Mm -hmm. But when you go into the true essence of the truth being brought back down, that happened again in 19, late 60s and 70s with Abba Bivens. That's right. That's right. You know what I'm saying? If you can receive it through the spirit. Okay, but just going into the point of how there were these voids of time but that breath was always there. That wine was always there. It even says in Revelation 6, not to hurt the wine. Right. Okay? Another indicator to show you that fruit doesn't always mean physical fruit. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, um, yeah, Baba Kishaw, bro. <clears throat> this is the book of Job, chapter 32 and um, verse 8. It says, but there is a spirit in man. And the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. Can you go into that word? Can somebody pull up that word inspiration, please? The water. He said there is a spirit in man. Now, right there in Genesis 2, mm -hmm. it mentioned how man became a living soul. Okay? Talking about Adam. All right? Somebody from uh, Samoa. Come on, come on. It's all good. It's all good. But um, as he's looking that, as, as he's looking that up, you know what I'm saying? Um, just just to expound on that more. All right. It's a uh, matter of fact. Uh, it says, but there's a, you wanted the word spirit. Uh, inspiration. Inspiration. Yeah. yeah. I got it right here. Con. Okay. Con. That word. Uh, uh, spirit. H fifty three ninety seven. All right. Nash Nashama. All right. When you go down to the outline of biblical usage, it says breathe breath spirit breath of the Most High. Mm -hmm. So it says there is an inspiration. Or breath yeah. that's been given, okay? And what comes with this breath? Wisdom. The wisdom we just read about in Sirach the 24th chapter. Understanding judgment. Understanding how to um, attend to the Heavenly Father's will. All right, that's been given. Oh, go ahead, bro. Yeah. Look like... Yeah, it's a little more. It's kind, a little kind, more. for sure. Uh, when you jump down to the, uh, to the Hebrew Chaldee lexicon, all right, it says breath, spirit, it says the spirit of God imparting life and wisdom. There you go. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Ain't that something? Right. So it shows you that it just wasn't no just, whew. you know what I'm saying? The Adam was like, hey, I'm Adam. You know what I'm saying? No, it's, he already had a name. He already had a lifestyle. Right. All right. He, you know what I'm saying? was born of a, of a father and a mother. Okay. But this inspiration was given unto Adam on the right hand side. Now, right, and you have inspiration on the right hand side, but you also have an inspiration on the left hand side as well, which Satan governs. Right. All right, the spiritual demon Satan. Okay, that was it on that precepts of Paul. We can jump back to that in Genesis, the third chapter, because we just read chapter two. And wanted that read going into this breath. This is what makes the seed of the woman different than everybody else, because everybody came from Eve on the planet Earth today. Esau came from Eve, mm. you know what I'm saying? Ishmael, okay. But there is one particular trait that differentiates us from everybody else. Not solely just that we're Israelites, that is it. But what makes us Israelites? The wisdom that the Heavenly Father sent down. Okay? That's what makes us Israelites. Okay? Go ahead, bro. It's Genesis 3 and verse 14. It says, And the Most High Yahweh said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above all beasts of the field. He was brought low amongst creation. Mm -hmm. All right. Even in Job, the 30th chapter, when you read that, all right, it doesn't necessarily say Esau there. All right. But once you actually connect the precepts, connected in Obadiah, connected in mm -hmm. Jeremiah 40, 49 and 50, mm -hmm. going into those, that 
goes right back to Job 30 and explains him being a base man. Mm -hmm. All right. Even in Daniel, because when it says upon thy belly, that's what that means is to be base right. or to be brought low. Brought low. That's okay. True. That's exactly what that means. Even in Daniel, the fourth chapter, it goes into, it says what loosely paraphrasing, this is made by the decree of the watchers to the heavenly father's intent that he can have the most basis man rule the earth. And that's loosely paraphrasing. Okay. And ironically, when you read that, it was base man that started ruling later on when you read those prophecies of Daniel. Esau, right. starting with those Greeks and those Romans. Yeah. So when you read it in Job the 30th chapter, it talks about this base fellow or this individual, all right, that fled into the mountains, which it should be a no-brainer to show you who that is. Right. Their name today, Esau Edom, I'm sorry, Cauc Esau Edom's name today, what they go by, classify themselves, Caucasian, literally means a cave dweller. Right. All right. They eat raw ass meat. Mm -hmm. Okay. They smell like dog mm -hmm. when they sweat. And we the list goes on and on about these devil's flaws, but it goes into them being base and how the Lord had to have these base individuals in the power seat to prove his point. That's right. Okay. As quickly as it went into the dust, you know, that goes into confusion. And that's what, you know, Jake is right now. They look at like, for example, women, they look at their hair, look at, uh, Either my white woman here and mm -hmm. think that's what it needs to be, so they can like their hair blonde. But yeah, right. that's the the weakest, uh, for, uh, uh weakest right. uh, strand of hair. That's right. You know, so that's like being in that confusion state. That's right. Know, that dust. That's right, bro. Um, back in Genesis three and fourteen, it says, and above all the beasts of the field, it says, upon the, thy belly shall thou go, and dust shall. Thou eat all the days of thy life. Go ahead. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. Now, uh, can you break that down, Shapo? No, this is um, this is going between the man and the woman. Read it again. It's, Come. it's, it's all good. It says, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman. All right, so explain oh, that's that what, part. That's what the serpent, though, right? That's right, right. that's right. Mm -hmm. Kind of. And it says, and between thy seed and her seed. Who is the, the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent? Israel and, you know, now today Edom. That's right. That now today Edom. Yeah. Beautifully explained. Yeah. All right. Beautifully explained. Yeah. Now today Edom. Because back then this serpent wasn't an actual Edomite. Mm -hmm. All right. This flesh, this serpent wasn't walking around saying, yeah, my, I'm an Edomite. All right, right. All right. No, this was a nation. All right, of people on the planet Earth that we was not supposed to deal with, man. Right. All right, and what they portrayed and exuded because they this serpent came after the working of Satan. All right, this serpent came after the working of Satan. Even when you go into this word serpent here in the Hebrew, that word is pronounced nachash. Okay, and when you go into the word nachash, it literally means one to practice divination, a witch, sorcerer. Okay. But when you go into one of the definitions that stand out, it means to practice. Mm. Okay, we can. I'll actually have Micah two and one held later on, you know, to link back to that. So those of y'all that are listening to this lesson, keep that word practice in mind because that goes to the definition of the serpent, one to practice. Okay, which shows you it wasn't an actual man, but it was somebody who practiced divination, a wicked influence on the left hand side. That's right. All right. This is he who came after the working of Satan. Back then, okay, and Eve was beguiled by this knowledge, That's right. okay, by this particular form, form of wisdom, whatever it consisted with. I mean, you know, the list goes on and on. You can, you can pretty much look at everything you see here right now, you know, the witchcraft, the magic, how they put it in the stores, the media and such, and it can link back unto that serpent pretty much, man. All right, even in, um, uh, in Ezekiel, the 28th chapter. All right, it talks about the anointed cherub, okay? How he came with the stones, the music, and everything like that. Like, this is what they were into, just as we're into the stones. And on the right-hand side, all right, on the left-hand side, there's energy tied to it as well. That's why when we wear the stones and stuff like that, we know the meaning behind it and the energies that it carries, all right? But at the same time, on the left-hand side, they do the same thing, all right? But there's an influence on each side, okay? Go ahead, bro. Just a quick while you yeah. mentioned me. I saw this lady and she saw my stone and she kind of like told me what it was. She like, yeah. And she looked like she was a witch, had on like mm -hmm. the own, uh, uh, she had on some jeans under, but it was like uh, the kind of outfit, like the top and everything. She just looked like a witch to me. 
Come on. But she just knew about the stones and different things, but she just looked like an old rusty Edomite. But she knew a lot about it, and I was like, yeah, this this is a witch. The spirit just let me know that this is a witch. Yeah. Yep. So, but they do know, a, you like the same thing. They Just like you said, going into um, Egypt, when uh, when when, when um, Moses, when he turned that, the, 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 you know, turned that Aaron's staff into what, the snake? Yeah, cobra. And what happened? On the left hand side, the Egyptians did the same they thing. They did the same thing. They brought out two snakes. They showed the power that the right hand side, because it what? They overtaking eight, both of the that's eight right. snakes on the left hand That's side. beautiful, and that's the difference. That's the difference. The power, it's still power that comes from the heavens, because the Heavenly Father put the spirit on uh, Janice and Jambres mm -hmm. to perform that miracle. That's right. All right, but there was only so far that that miracle could go because right. the scriptures goes into how there's on there's certain bounds that they can't pass mm -hmm. all right i forgot where that is in job in job if somebody can look that up Baba Kishaw, you know what i'm saying but there's certain bounds that he can't pass and when you look at that example of those two priests in egypt the same thing applies today right. as we're looking at the seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman okay but right here again it goes into these two seeds that are existing mm -hmm. all right oh, i'm sorry that are going to exist okay and somebody will think that it's an actual seed of a serpent like a physical seed that's here but i mean i mean they're, they're, let, let me let me expound on what i said because obviously there is a physical seed that's here that comes from the serpent but what i mean when i say that is people will read that and think that that actual serpent had children and those children that from little serpent are here today. They surpassed the flood, finagled their way through, mm -hmm. or they'll just say it's it's Satan. You know that serpent was Satan. No, it was somebody that came in the spirit of Satan. Mm -hmm. But that same spirit that came from Satan was preserved. All right, it was preserved just as on the right hand side it was preserved through Shem. All right, what comes to mind just going into it? You know, you had the sons of God that went off, but even on the boat, you had Noah and his sons. Kurt Cain was cursed. That's right. Cursed be Canaan. So thought comes to my mind. It's like, man, what was Ham into? And I'm speaking as a man. All right, I'm speaking as a man. But the thought is like, what the hell was Ham into? Right. You know what I'm saying? For him to want to look at his dad's nakedness, for his seed Canaan to be cursed, and then later on down the line, Esau intermingled with those Canaanites. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And you can even look on YouTube and look at those Canaanites are fucking witches. Excuse my French. They're into crucial witchcraft. There's videos of them levitating and floating around, literally, in, the, in, the, in, the, in their weird, uh, primitive, uh, tribal apparel. You know what I'm saying? And when I think about this serpent in Genesis 3, what comes to mind is that primitive, tribal apparel look with the stones and everything, hitting drums. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying the thought that comes to mind of what enticed them. You know what I'm saying? Because when it comes to idol worship and witchcraft and everything, there's a particular look. That they were even those masons wear aprons and stuff like that right. when they do it and even in, even when you read about when they ate that fruit or partaking in that knowledge the scriptures say they put those those um fig leaves together so, and, and covered themselves but that's not going into them like oh i'm naked i gotta cover myself no that was a that was um an apparel that was tied to the practices that they was doing all right because there's even certain cultures and such that do that today as it was mentioned earlier the masons with the apparel you know those tribal Hamites and everything when they do their rituals and such, right. you know, even when you look at the Pope right. You know what I'm saying? There's a, an apparel mm -hmm. that comes with that level of idolatry. Yep. Okay They got to put on a certain deal It's like I was gonna say I, I believe because um, you know they wear that big tall hat mm -hmm. and I saw somewhere that it resembles something of a fish. Yeah, that, that goes to Dagon. Yep, that goes to Dagon. And there were even Babylonian priests and Hermetic priests that called themselves Dogons. You know what I'm saying? Pretty much a, another form of Dagon. And they're into that primitive ritualistic practice of those ancient gods, namely the fish god. And that, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because that was influenced and introduced to the Roman Empire later on in time. You know what I'm saying? I remember we're going into the serpent. Yep. And for y'all listening, we're going to touch into the seed of the serpent and show you how that applies to Edom today. That's right. All right. And those practices that they do is what stands out to show forth that they are the seed of the serpent. All right. The seed of the serpent who came after the working of the spiritual demon Satan. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Go ahead. When you go and look at uh, Rome and how when they doing the Roman Wars after they were basically conquering Greek going into Asia Minor, mm -hmm. you know, you got to think when during the time of Babylon, when Belshazzar, Sazar, you know, they came in doing the writing on the wall and mm -hmm. they, if you go, yeah, if you go, they took those Chaldeans and all those priests they had and they took them off the city before, the, you know, they came in. Yeah. And yeah, they right. took them all the way up there, like to those, uh, I guess, where the Druids and everything was dwelling. Mm -hmm. And when you go look when Rome was up there, they was basically taking heed to these idol gods. Yes, that's that's exactly it. You know, that's exactly it. Those Roman pontiffs, what they're called are mm -hmm. pontiffs, which are those priests. Mm -hmm. All right. They actually adopted the custom of how they worship those gods. Later on, they became Jupiter, Mercury and such. Mm -hmm. But that goes back to those Rome. I'm sorry, those Babylonian priests. Mm -hmm. All right. Those Babylon, those Chaldeans. All right. You can actually go into the history, even even when Cyrus and Darius came and influenced and I'm sorry, infiltrated Babylon. When Darius came and infiltrated Babylon, which he was expounding mm -hmm. on, you know, there were priests that actually fled out of Babylon and moved into different regions of Asia Minor. And they continued those practices. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can actually when you, it, it's very interesting when you look up the Church of Pergamum, the Church of Pergamos. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's actually where those Babylonian priests fled to. A lump, some of them fled to the land of Pergamos and kept and adopted those practices. And that even goes further even into the, the uprising of Asclepios. You know what I'm saying? The staff, the serpent around it. They kept that and they grew a system of what you see here today. That's right. So another yeah. indicator to show you what's going on with this serpent and how the influence is here today in a nation of people. I know you got a precept, bro. No, no, no. no one moment. No, 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 no. Come, let's get it. Come, exactly. Uh, Genesis 3 and verse 15, I started the topic again. It says, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. All right, so we established the seed portion of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we're going to further establish the seed portion of it. But what differentiates the seed of the woman to everybody else on the planet Earth is the wisdom we've been given. All right, so this seed of the serpent is here today, which actually still came from the woman. But there is an essence or there is, I'd rather say, a spirit that is in them, all right, that comes from Satan, okay? This is the seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman, okay? And we're going to go into how that seed is likened unto Esau, Esau Edom, okay? But it says enmity. Now that's another indicator to show forth that this is Jacob and Esau, okay? The enmity, okay? Do you know what the word enmity means? It, it means to have uh, perpetual uh, contention. It means to be an enemy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It means it come come. It, it it means to be in a deeper in a deeper aspect of it that perpetual contention is there because it comes from a womb. Come. You know what I'm saying? But the, the, just a simple definition. It just means an enemy. You know what I'm saying? And we have a natural born enemy on the planet Earth. That's right. Okay. And it goes into that. All right. Um. I right, finish up that verse, and uh, we can pull up Genesis. Chapter uh, 27. All right. Mm, I think starting around like 38 or something, going into the blessing yeah. of Esau. Okay. Uh, this is back in the middle of Genesis 3 and 15. And this shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Now, what does that mean? Uh, uh, it shall bruise his head. thy head, and thy shall bruise his heel. Because uh, you would be brought low if, if it's going to bruise your head. Who bruised whose head? Uh, Esau bruised our head. No. Let's, no. Let's read, let's read that again. It's all good, bro. When you go into it, it's because remember, this is the Allah I am speaking to the serpent. Okay, fine. All right. So it's saying, look, you know, your seed is going to have enmity with her seed. Her seed is going to bruise your head when it's oh. all said and done. Mm -hmm. But your seed is going to bruise this seed's heel. And what you go into that heel. All right, that goes into us being brought down, being subject, being in slavery, beat down by the serpent. Okay. But it's not a it's, it's not a career ending injury. Okay. You know what I'm saying? It's just something that keeps you disabled for a period of time. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that namely we can we can. I mean, obviously, when you start going into the, the, the Grecian Empire and really start looking into when Antiochus came into the scene. And that was even around the same time of. Um, I mean, even when you go into Ptolemy, what is now Philopater, I believe it was Philopater, you know what I'm saying? Um, who, who, uh, 
I believe it was Ptolemy Philopater. He was uh, the Ptolemy that was in power around the time where the Library of Alexandria was created. When you go either it was him or his father, they also put holy hell on the Israelites too. But when you go into the Seleucid line and the Ptolemaic line, that they was going hard on wickedness. That's why you read it in Malachi, the first chapter, where it talks about, you know, a wicked root coming out of the line of Seleucus. Because that's when Esau started taking it there. When they started attacking the covenant, the people of the covenant, when you read about it in those prophecies in Daniel and such, that was literally that moment. All right. Namely, when Esau coming into power with Alexander, of course. But that was ushering in Job 9 and 24. Right. The earth being into the hands of the wicked. And when you go into those periods of time. They started attacking Jake like a mug. You know what I'm saying? And then going on to when the Romans came on the scene. Got to remember, there was pacts yep. that was made. And we made a pact with the Romans. All right? To protect us and aid us and help us as we were having those, those quarrels or that enmity with those Greeks, the Antiochus. All right? But in those pacts, those Romans broke the pact later on because they're Edomites at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? And they was raining down that hell on us. And Lord's will, obviously, it's so much we can go into, but just want to keep it fit for this lesson to touch up just on this point and keep the main thing, the main thing. When you go into that seed of the serpent and how it says, it shall bruise thy head, that is going into what's about to happen when Yahweh Shai comes back. That's right. Because he starts the seed of the woman. It starts with Yahweh Shai. All right. And then it goes into the elect Israel. Because Israel is going to be the one, starting with Yahweh Shai, that's going to bash the head of the serpent. You got a precept? Yeah, to kind of uh, land back on what you just mentioned about Yahweh Shai, is basically he's going to heal the bruise. Khan, that's right, that's right. And uh, if one of y'all can pull up Psalm 68, going into the hoary head, it should be one of the first few verses. Khan. Go ahead. This is Luke 4 and 18. It says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel of the poor. And this is in Rizal, well is Yahweh Shai speaking. Mm -hmm. And he's quoting Isaiah. Mm -hmm. You know, you got it. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach the deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Mm. And what is the bruise? Beautiful precept. What is the bruise? The Achilles heel. Achilles heel. You know, it shall bruise, but thou shalt bruise his heel. Mm -hmm. All right. And to think about it, after Yahweh Shai went back to the Father, there was still a period of time where we was going to be bruised. Okay? Now, Yahweh Shai came and fulfilled his portion here in the flesh, which is a portion no man could fulfill other than him. Okay? And with that being done, with that prophecy being fulfilled, understanding was brought down. But still, a falling away had to happen. Why is that? Because that beast had to be wounded. That beast that was alive during the time of Yahweh Shai... Had to still be wounded. Okay. And after the wound. His deadly wound still had to be healed. Right. Okay. Which is this. With the deadly wound being healed. Absolutely. It really. It, it started. 13, 1400s around the Renaissance. Right. When they started coming back up into that power period. Right. But I know where. You know. I don't want to go too far ahead. I don't want to go too far ahead. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. It's getting. You know. I'm a little excited right now. Yeah. You know. But was able to find that one in Isaiah. Uh, I'm sorry. Psalm 68. Chappelle. Uh, you got it, Tasha? Psalm, Psalm 68. Yeah. The, the hoary head of the wicked. The hoary head of the wicked. So I can. It's in Psalm 68, one of the first few verses. Um, it's the hoary head. Matter of fact, let me I'll find it. I know another easy way to do it is blue letter. If you type in hoary, it'll pull up. I would do it, but my phone, you know, recording. I don't want to put too much noise on it. But it's in Psalm chapter 68. And let's see here. The hoary head. You uh, okay? Y'all pulling it up? Con con. H o a r y, I think, or e y. But it goes into the the hoary head. I found it. It's in verse twenty one, and I'll read it. This is the book of Psalms, chapter sixty eight, verse twenty one. But the Most High shall wound the head of his enemies. All right, and how is he going to do that? By sending his son, Yahweh Shai, oh, the, the angels. Mm -hmm. All right. It says Harry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So lock it. <laughs> yeah. There's another precept that goes to the hoary head as well. So that's where I got it mixed up at. But it says Harry. But going into that, that starts with Yahweh Shai and the angels coming to subdue 
all right, the world, all right, right the wicked of this world, starting with Esau, Edom, right. and even the elect are going to receive salvation and be partakers within that business as well, okay? But this is the fulfillment of the seed of the woman, all right, destroying the head of the serpent. That's right. Because the deadly wound was healed still. That's right. But it's going to come to a point, as Psalm 68 goes <laughs> into it, how it's going to actually be done finally, all right? And even when you go into that word, Harry, in the Hebrew, which is another little clue, to show you that as Esau, yeah. the word in the Hebrew is pronounced Sha'ayar, or how they would say Seir. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like Mount Seir. Seir. Yep. Okay, that's what Seir is in the Hebrew, Sha'ayar, which means hairy or means goat. Okay, Dan of the 8th chapter goes into the eagle. Mm -hmm. Now, we know that that's talking about the Grecians, but it's still a huge significance with that being the Grecians, because those are when the Edomites first got their that's power right. seat over the world. That's right, the eagle. Or the known world around that time. Okay, where man dwelt, the he goat. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's another little indicator, a clue to show you that this seed of the serpent is talking about Edom. All right, because that judgment was set that the seed of the woman was going to bruise or, or beat the head of the serpent. Okay, right. that word is whore hairy in Psalm 68. Okay, so that was it on that precept there. And um, you, did you finish up verse 15 yet? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to pause there. Because somebody will still ask the question. Okay, you went into these Hebrew words, but how can you still prove? I'm, I'm still trying to figure out how you're linking the seed of the serpent to Esau. How can you prove that this is Esau? So the next scripture that we can go to is going to be in Revelation, the 12th chapter. Yep. And we can start from it. You already got it, my man. That's what's up. And somebody can hold 2nd Ezra, the 6th chapter as well. Yep. You still got Genesis 27? Okay. Anybody still got that? Remember we asked for that too. Okay. Matter of fact, let's go there next. Let's go there next. Mm-hmm. Because when you read about these blessings here, about these two individuals that came from Isaac, Jacob and Esau, they all were going to have a significant role ruling the whole earth. Okay. The other nations that had their time, even when in Daniel 7, when you look at Babylon, the media Persian Empire. When you look at them, you know, even the Greeks and the Romans at that time, they did not rule over the whole face of the earth. Nope. No. All right. Now, later in time, the Edomites started to, you know what I'm saying, which started with that little horn that came up. Yep. All right. You know, the, 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 the beast that mimicked the dragon. Right. Okay. Right. But, you know what I'm saying, those other kings back then never ruled the whole compass of the earth. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it was prophesied, we're about to read, that these two nations of people were going to have dominance over the whole planet okay you got it you want me to go with jacob and esau oh uh, we can go straight to esau come on this is uh genesis 27 and verse sorry verse 20 uh 38 38 yeah yep. i mean 38 Salakis. come on bro no, i'll mess with you <laughs> Salaki, yeah. we, we, we joke around we joke around 34, but yeah let's get to um, but yeah let's get straight to the point this is uh verse 38 and esau said unto thy father has thou but one blessing, O my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. The fatness of the earth. That goes into all the riches of the earth. Even when you go into um, the definitions of fatness, one of the definitions actually means oil. Yep. You know what I'm saying? That's one of the definitions. And that's one of the main resources that Esau has went to war over, subjugated people to, destroyed kings, set up puppet kings just so they'd have those positions over there in the earth where the majority of the oil will flow. That's right. You know what I'm saying? There's no other nation of people that have done it. Now, somebody can say, well, that sounds like those Muslims and those Arabs, they have their portions and everything. And yeah, they dwell on fruitful lands. Because yeah. the scriptures even say Ishmael, would, kings would come from Ishmael. All right, but who are the ones that are controlling the world's oil sources? Ishmael ain't just going to all these places of the earth. They'll go into places of the earth, but wherever Ishmael at with oil, Esau's face will be right there with that suit That's and right. that tie. You know what I'm saying? Esau's right there. And not even just the oil, but all the riches of the earth. All right? Matter of fact, there was a period of time that you consider the sub-Saharan slave trade. All right? And even around the time, and I know you got some. One sec. But even when you go into the time period of that deadly wound being healed, there was, um, how can I put this, a series of events 
that had to transpire for Esau to receive that whole dominance. Because even in the beginning of the Renaissance and the end of the Dark Ages, you still had Jake Kings that held significant roles. That's right. King James. King James. Right. You know what I'm saying? That was during the 1600s. You know? But when you go into the time period of their, where they were reemerging from their hiding place, all right, there was different decrees and, and such that was passed that gave them the green light to go unto the world and colonize them under the guise of Catholicism and such. You know, you have what's called the Doctrine of Discovery, okay? And when you go into the Doctrine of Discovery, it was a period of time, 150-odd years, maybe a little more, where there were decrees that was passed, deals that was made for them to sail to different parts of the earth and subjugate them, all right? And one of them, they actually came and fought against those Arabs and, and such, and that's a clue to show you that these ain't the Edomites right here. Right. All right. This is around the time period where Esau, you know, started sharpening and polishing his horns. Yeah. Sub-Saharan slave trade. They came over there to those regions where those Ishmaelites are at and even certain areas of Eastern Africa and such and pushed Christianity on them. All right. Then later on in time, all right, they came over to the Western hemisphere of the earth. All right. And that was passed during a, a decree. Oh, I believe it was called the uh, Intercatera. Yeah. All right. One that was when, course. you know, Pope Alexander the Sixth, yeah. uh, you know, who was Rodrigo Borgia, his son Cesare Borgia, you know what I'm saying, was on the scene. Um, Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo was on the scene painting yeah, those right. images. Yeah. And what did they do? They came over to the side of the earth and said, bow down to Jesus, nigga. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that's what it was. And again, that was the ushering in of that deadly wound being healed that we're about to read about. OK, but just going back into that, I know there's a lot of history that we're going into, okay? But that's going into how he started ruling the earth in, his in, in, in the entirety, all right? Not just certain areas, but it's in, in its entirety. That's right. Go ahead, bro. Quickly say that's when he went to Ishmael, he bartered his, his blessing, the sword, and gave them all type of uh, weapon and military yep. might. Beautiful. And they basically did, got what? The oil. Yep. The fatness of the earth. Man. And it's wow. standing it throughout. The that's water. Right. The water. Beautiful point. Yeah, Ishmael ain't going around looking for weapons of mass destruction, bro. It's, it's Esau. They, Esau like they're the ones that had the weapons of mass destruction. Yeah, yeah. George Bush had ass. You know what I'm saying, bro? This is Esau, man. Right. right. <laughs> you got it, bro. And it's uh, weapons of mass to, destruction. So like it. Oh no, come on. I'm, uh, verse 39. And Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, uh, "Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth." And of the dew of heaven from above. Right. And you see it. All right. That wasn't fulfilled to its entirety with the Greeks and the Romans. They started it, but there was a pause that happened. Okay. Revelation 20 chapter talks about how they were bound in the prison for a thousand years. All right. That was during those dark ages. So after that fourth beast, which, you know, I don't want to even go too further. Well, I'm going to hold that part, but right there it says, <laughs> it says right there that they were going to be over the dew of heaven and of the earth. Mm -hmm. That it goes into complete dominance over the planet earth. Okay? So I wanted to go into that because right there, when you read that, can you jump to the part where Esau wanted vengeance for his brother Jacob? Yeah. Okay, the water. It says, uh, 41. Yep. verse 41. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. So now we're seeing where this enmity is coming from. He had hatred and had enmity with his brother Jacob due to the blessing. Okay, this is the same enmity that was prophesied in Genesis 3 about the seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman. Okay, this is the same enmity. All right, because these two seeds were going to have significant roles on the planet Earth. The most significant roles on the planet Earth. All right. First being Esau, then being Jacob. OK, so that was pretty much it. I know you just wanted to go into that briefly, but I want to jump to Revelation, the 12th chapter. Bubba Gashon, we can start from the top. Not going to go into the whole thing because that's a, a crucial breakdown within itself. But I just want to touch upon main points. Just want to touch upon key points <clears throat> to solidify this lesson. All right. Because somebody can ask the question. You still haven't proved to me that this serpent is Esau. All right, they can still say that easily, okay? So this scripture here sets in stone to show you pretty much, but you got to have the spirit dealing with you to see it. But the clue is there, and it's obvious, okay? You got it, bro? Yeah. Okay. This is uh, the book of Revelation, chapter 12, and verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, 
and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Now, who is this woman talking about? Israel. Israel. How can you prove it? Jeremiah uh, six and six and uh, two. That's right. I have likened the daughter of Zion to a calmly and delicate woman. Good job. All right. Now, the sun and the moon represent wisdom. The wisdom. All right. Wisdom of Solomon. Even seven. Even we don't got to get it. It's all the spirit pass. But it expounds on it. When you read about that, the wisdom of Solomon seven, going into the essence of wisdom, likened unto the sun. Okay, and then it goes into the twelve stars over her head. Okay, which represent the twelve tribes of Israel. That's right. All right. Now, somebody's to ask the question: How can you prove that those twelve stars represent the twelve tribes of Israel? An easy way to to to, to go to it is going into the dream that Joseph had. All right. You you remember the dream Joseph had? Genesis. Was it like Genesis? Uh, I forgot exactly what chapter it is. It's in the 30s, I think. Uh, you know, but it goes into the dream he had of how those stars came up. The sun yeah. and the moon and the stars came up and gave obeisance unto him, which is likened unto the time where his brethren had to come to Egypt and bow down to him because he had that power. But it likens them being to stars. All right. And Jacob and, and, um, and, and the white woman of Jacob, all right, the mother of Joseph to be the sun of the moon. Okay, but going into those stars, that's how you can go into that. Even the apostle, uh, I'm sorry, uh, the apostle Paul goes in, goes briefly goes into Abraham. All right, but when you go into the blessing that was given to Abraham, it said he was seed was going to be multiplied as the sands of the sea and the stars of heaven. That's right. Okay, so these are clues and precepts to allude to to go into the stars that was over this calmly and delicate woman's head to prove that that is likened unto the nation of Israel. Okay. Genesis 15. Okay. Con, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm just Con, I saw good. That's a bet. That's a bet. But that, that goes into what the Lord gave that blessing to Abraham. Huh. That's right, bro. Did you want me to get that in Genesis about uh, the dream? Yeah, let's get it. Let's get it. It's all good. Might as well. This is uh, Genesis 30, uh, 37. 37. I was thinking 38. Uh, verse 9. It says, and he dreamed another dream. Because the first dream was some sheaves coming to him yeah. and giving obeisance. So the second dream, can you imagine how his brothers felt? Hey, man, this so young ass, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, you know? Yeah. Jake, you know how Jake, Jake, is, Jake, Jake be hating, bro? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Go yeah. ahead, bro. The brother saying he's going to reign over you. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. Genesis 37 and 9, it says, And he dreamed yet another dream and uh, told it to his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more, and behold... And the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made abundant uh, uh, ab 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 obeisance right. to me. Now, why did it say eleven stars? Can anybody answer that question? Because he's the twelve star. He's the twelve star. That's right, brother. <laughs> you know, eleven stars. You got to remember. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Dan is scattered and mixed in, pretty much in between the tribes. Right. All right. So Dan, not necessarily is out the equation, but Dan is in the midst. Dan is that random brother in your camp that you don't know whose tribe it is. So like, I'm, I'm joking when I say that, y'all. Do not take that for, for, for word. I am playing. That it, we literally joke about that. I oh, that brother from Dan. So don't take, don't take that literally, folks. I'm playing. Okay? But anyway, Dan, all right, and then Joseph had his two sons, That's Ephraim right. and Manasseh. Yeah. Okay? So they play in their role in those ranks That's right. of those stars. You know what I'm saying? And replace of the actual name of Joseph in the name of of of, uh, of of Dan, yep. you know what I'm saying? You got Ephraim and Manasseh, yep. okay? Maybe and Joseph Ephraim. is still in the midst of that with his two mm -hmm. boys. Kind. You know what I'm saying? Just as Dan, just as Dan is mixed in mm -hmm. somewhere. Dan just means judge at the end of the day, and those judges are are, are mixed in. That's you know right. what I'm saying? Ooh. We're all judges at the end of the day. That's right. That don't mean it's a breakdown <laughs> to say that we're secretly <laughs> the tribe of Dan. You know, because Jake right. tried to do that back then. Oh, we're the tribe of Dan for real. That's no, bro. It just means a judge. But going into it, Dan is just, is just among all 12 tribes. You know what I'm saying? But the water for bringing that precept out, that's another precept to prove of those 12 stars over the woman's head. That's right. Okay? Let's continue. Back in the book of Revelation, chapter 12 and verse 2. And she being with child, cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. Okay, so can anybody explain what this means? What that verse that was just read meant? With... This woman being Israel in pains with child. Yeah, I was yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's go to uh, Matthew chapter 11, verse 12. Good job. This is Matthew 11, verse 24. Because this is right now going 
like rev the thing about revelation is it is a hell of prop like extreme amount of prophecy in it but there's prophecies that already came to pass in revelation right all right the beginning of revelation the 12th chapter is going into israel in the time period of yahweh shai when he was born okay this is going into the early stages of what's called pax romana okay Daniel, I'm not Daniel, I'm sorry. Uh, Second Ezra, the 11th chapter, okay. touches up on Pax Romana. Okay, the beginning of that was the introduction period of, of Yahweh Shai coming into the scene. Okay, Pax Romana technically started uh, about a half a century or such prior to when Yahweh Shai was born with Julius Caesar. But that is that time period right there where those Caesars started ruling and Rome really became of excuse my French but a fucking powerhouse. That's right. That's you know right. what I'm saying? That's when they cemented their dominance. Cemented because they was doing deals and leagues with those Grecians and such around the time of those Syrian wars and everything. And and Rome had influence. But this is when when Pax Romana started, that's when that motherfucking hammer was bow like like they was a force to be reckoned with. You know what I'm saying? And nobody was coming up against them. Right. Okay, and these were Edomites. That, that okay, was, that was whenever it was called Edom Rome. Well, they they did call it. They they sure did call it Edom Rome around that time. That's a beautiful point. And there's even just to add to that beautiful point, there's a book that's actually out, and it's an older book that came out probably a century or such ago. That's called the Roman Empire, the Empire of the Edomite. You know what I'm saying? Because these are clues. Because even even those Ro those Greeks were Edomites. Right. You know what I'm saying? Now you had Jakes that was scattered in, just like you had. Jakes that was scattered in Rome and everything. But when it came to those true Romans, those Caesars, those rulers, those political figures mm -hmm. that had that influence, those were Edomites. And those were Edomites that came after the working of Satan. That's right. All right. When we continue to read here, it's going to expound on how these Romans right here are the seed of Satan. These Edomites, who I'd rather say the seed of serpent, who was the seed of Satan at the end of the day. Right. Okay, but it says Salakia, what you just read there goes into how the woman was in travail around this time being with child and it's going to explain why she was in travail. Okay, did we finish that up in Matthew 11? No. Okay, let's get that. You can bring out your point. We'll go to the, uh, 24? Uh, 12. 12. Matthew 11 and 12. This is Matthew 11, verse 12. It says, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence. Suffereth violence. The kingdom of heaven, it being Israel. That's right. Okay. Suffering violence. Go ahead. And the violent take it by force. The violent taking it by force. People will say this. The spirits will even say no. You know, this was people that was influenced mm -hmm. by the spiritual of demons Satan. These are the Romans it's talking about. Right. All right. This is the time of that fourth beast. That Daniel the prophet talked about in the reign of Belshazzar in Daniel 7. This is it. Okay, because that had to come to pass. Just as the third beast, excuse me, just as the three prior beasts had to come to pass, this fourth beast had to come to pass and it had to play a very significant role. And this is also a cut to a lot of these Torah only Israelites mm -hmm. that'll talk about. That the New Testament is irrelevant and everything. One thing to explain is well, how can you explain the fourth beast? Where in the scriptures can you explain the fourth beast? All right, at the time of Yahweh Shai, his ministry, the New Testament is irrelevant. How can you explain that? You can't. You can't explain it. Okay? So it says the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violent take it by force. Go ahead. Huh. That verse uh, Matthew 11 and 13, it says, for all the prophets and the law prophesied unto John. And yeah. what did they prophesy about? The coming of Yahweh Shai. Mm -hmm. They prophesied until John. Okay? So you had men that was on the scene that was prophesying. Right. Letting them know. Even Malachi, the last book of the Old Testament. He literally was the last prophet that we have documented in the Old Testament that spoke on John. And that spoke on Yahweh Shai. All right? It's in Malachi the third chapter, Malachi the fourth chapter, talking about Elijah the prophet. Right. And he spoke about that. Okay? Now, how can an Old Testament guy explain Malachi 3, Malachi 4? They can't, you know? But just harping on the point, around this time period until the days of John the Baptist, you had the violent 
that took them by force. And that is the ex example, or I'd rather say Revelation 12 and 2 expounded upon about the woman being a travail with child. Mm -hmm. Okay? Go ahead, Shapur. That was it on that one. I'm, uh, Revelation 12 and uh, verse 3. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon. Now, you find it ironic. Find it ironic. Just follow me. He didn't say three wonders in this chapter. He didn't say four. Mm -hmm. He didn't say a wonder. He said two wonders. Mm -hmm. The sea, I'm sorry, the woman yep. who represents Israel, mm -hmm. and then this red, hairy dragon yep. that represents Esau. Two, Jacob and Esau. Yeah. That's what John saw. Mm -hmm. Now, he actually seen a vision of a woman with, you know what I'm saying, the, the eccentric look. You know what I'm saying? And then he seen this red beast. But there was a symbolic allegory that was tied behind it that was going to expound on Genesis, the 24th chapter, about these blessings. Okay? Go ahead, bro. Huh. Somebody hold Daniel 7 and 7, Bob Kishore? Okay. The water. I'm going to read verse 3 again. It says, and there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns. Okay, seven heads and ten horns. Now, the prior verse talked about this woman being in travail. That was those Romans. Yep. This is the fourth beast, seven heads and ten horns. This is the fourth beast. Okay. Now, um, can any of y'all explain? You don't got to go into detail. But can you explain why it explains it as seven heads and ten horns? And they don't got to be detailed, meaning who the horns were and all that. But can anybody explain what that means? You know, it's going into the pastures. That's right. You know, so the, uh, basically, even uh, from, if I'm not mistaken, Rome was, you know, at, at time, you know, basically, if you look at it, like Rome started out as a small uh, uh, state, if you will, yeah. a country. But eventually, over time, started to occupy lands outside of itself to where now it was something much bigger, but it's still comprised of those various different facets. That's so right, bro. I'm breaking it down. You quick. broke you broke it down beautifully, my brother. Beautifully. Now, just to specify on these vassals, because you have the seven heads. Right. Now, those seven heads were seven regions. You know what I'm saying? That kings, pretty much kings, were ruling. You know what I'm saying? And those seven regions, um, the Greeks, the Romans, Spain, French... British, Germana Major, and Germana Minor. You know, those are the seven heads. And when you go into the ten horns, well, it's going to go into it today, but talking about back then. Because when you read in, in, in uh, Revelation 12 and verse 3, that's talking about the Roman Empire. And you can even include Herod, you know what I'm saying, the Herodian dynasty within that too. Because they played a very significant role on why Israel was suffering persecution. And it's going to explain that as we continue to read that. You know what I'm saying? We talked about that uh, about almost a, uh, almost a year ago, something like that, walking back from camp, going into the Daniel 12, I'm sorry, Revelation 12 breakdown. Right. You know what I'm saying? But that goes to the Roman Empire and even the Herodian dynasty because that, that dragon really just represents Esau at the end of the That's day. Right. You know? So when you go into those ten horns, you know, that um, that were with the seven heads that, that ran, or I'd rather say it like this, that were attached to the seven heads, you have the Vandals, you have the Ostrogoths, the Franks, the Alemanis, the Visigoths, the Burgundians, the Lombards, the Anglo-Saxons, the Suebes, and the Horelis. And these are different um, tribes, you know what I'm saying, or clans or such. The majority of them being on that Germanic, the Germanic side, you know what I'm saying? But still, without, without a doubt, they were subjugated or subjects to the, the, the Roman Empire. This is what made up the dragon. Okay. With the Roman Empire being at the head of that. Okay. And as we're going to go into later on. You mentioned NATO and the EU. That is more so acts as the resurrection. Mm -hmm. To what was already created back then. Of what was just expounded on. That's right. You know. Because Revelation 13 goes into that beast. And how the beast worshipped the dragon. Okay. And we're going to go into that Lord's willing. If the spirit permits it. But. When you go into that, even any top rank theological scholar can tell you that this dragon right here in Revelation, the 12th chapter, is talking about the Roman Empire. Right. Okay? 
So one can still be like, I'm still waiting on how you can prove that this serpent is talking about Esau Edom or the seed of the serpent is talking about Esau Edom. So go ahead and um, continue on that verse, bro. Huh. And then you can jump down um, to verse 9. Huh. Revelation 12 and 3. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. There you go. Go ahead. And jump down to, you said verse 9? Yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, read verse 5 and then jump down to 9. I'm on verse 4 right now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Verse 4, Salah. Okay, okay, okay. Verse 4. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. Now, can anybody explain what that's talking about? Judah. Oh, come on. Oh, okay. <laughs> the third part? Yeah, yeah I asked. Uh, yeah. Judah, um, uh, Levi, and Benjamin. There you go. Mm -hmm. And why was it only Judah, Benjamin, and Levi? Because, they're here. They're really because the here. rest of the stars were over here. Yeah. You know? They're already in, um, they're already in uh, Asher. That's right. They was already in... Uh, uh, second Ezra chapter 13. Second Ezra chapter 13. Beautiful. Okay. All right. The tale of this beast <laughs> cast Judah, Benjamin, and Levi to the earth, meaning they were subject unto them. And it, and it also means that all 12 tribes were going to be... In this dwelling, during that, during after all this is fulfilled. Well, when you when you look at it from the prophet prophetic standpoint, yeah. which a lot of people can't receive, when you put all the prophecies together, when you go in, when, when you read it in Jeremiah, where yeah. it says Judah, yeah. Judah and Israel yeah. Yeah. shall yeah. be together, yeah. you know that that, that yeah. shows you more had to happen. Yeah, kind of. You know, yeah. even after Yahweh Shai was on the scene right. in the flesh, more had to prophetically take place in order for the actual deliverance to come to pass. All right, and that had to take place after what we're going to read later on, Lord's willing, the deadly wound being healed. Mm -hmm. Okay? So we don't want to go too too oh, far ahead, but the spirit is moving at the end of the day. Right. These are solid points brothers are bringing out. Okay? <laughs> go ahead, Shapar. Okay. Revelation 12 and 4, And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered. For to devour her child as soon as it was born. Devour her child as soon as it was born. Go ahead. Uh, just like uh, um, a Hoover King at the time uh, that was looking for Yahweh Shai being born. Herod. 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 What did he say? He was like, let me know. He was yeah, like that, right. that, uh, <laughs> that adder. Talking about, you know, hey, let me know when he's coming. I'm going to go uh, pay reference, you know. Where can you find that? That is in uh Let's bring it out. I ain't trying to cut you off, but yeah, we talked about it before. Hey, you know what I'm saying? We can yeah, bring yeah, things right, out all day. Right, yeah. <laughs> but where can we pull it out at? That's you right. know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, but I didn't say that to cut you off. So oh, forgive me, bro. Yeah. Correct. And that was 100% correct, brother. That was what comes to my mind. And that's that's exactly what that means. Okay. Uh, okay, let me go up. It's in 2. Yep. Matthew, uh, the second is, chapter. Yeah, this is Matthew 2 and verse... I'll start at verse 1. It says... And now when Jehoash was born in Bethlehem and Judea in the days of Herod, the king, the wise men from the east, saying, where is, where is he that born the king of the Jews? For we have seen the star of the east and are come to worship him. And Herod, the king, had heard things, these things. Had, uh, he was troubled and all of Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Mashiach should be born. And they said unto him in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by a prophet, by the prophet. And um, but and thou Bethlehem in the land of Judah art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor and that shall rule my people Israel. That's right. right. Isaiah 9. Isaiah 9. That's right, bro, which is another cut. Another cut to these Torah only Israelites. Right. Okay, who's this governor is talking about? Because right. David was already gone around this time. That's right. He was already dead. You know? Go ahead. Verse 7. And Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. Mm, you feel it. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search <laughs> diligently for the young child. You found a point, like you had a nugget right there, man. Well, no, the star, because the star is going to an actual chariot, right? Or am I? Yeah, that that, that star that he read about is right, talking right, about right. a chariot. Okay, kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why a lot of the chariots you look at look like just moving stars that are just gliding yeah. across the sky. It was the, just the word star, just going back to the Revelation 12. The okay. 12 stars. Yeah. The, it, I don't know. It was just the word star. Oh, I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I see what you're saying. Cut, cut. Yeah. 
Man, I thought you had a bang and precept. Like, oh, man, so like I didn't mean to cut you off from reading. You broke me thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's back in the middle of uh, Matthew 2 and 8. I mean, 2 and 8. It says, it says, uh, and when ye have found him, bring me word again that I might come and worship him also. So this is him being deceivable, being a devil, being a because he came after the working of Satan. That's right. The spiritual demon Satan. Word in the mouth, smooth him. Lord, that's smooth. Heart. That's right. The war was in his heart. That's right. That's exactly it. And Esau has constantly, continually played off that MO. Yeah. Yeah, this is the same way that the serpent beguiled Eve. You know what I'm saying? He came in deceivably, knowing the intent of what he really wanted to do. Right. You know, but this is the same essence of the actual serpent you read about in Genesis 3. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Who came after the working of Satan. This is his seed right here, bro. This is what they're known for doing. And Jake has adopted it and taken that so well and just used it to their perfection and benefit as we're here in this world, bro. You know what I'm saying? You see that the MO of the nation of Israel today. Why it makes sense why Yahweh Shai said in John 8 and 44, you are of your father the devil. Okay? Makes all the much more sense why he said that because Jake were the main ones that wanted to come up against him for truth's sake. That's right. And you see it today. You know? Hey, the scriptures say in Jeremiah uh, chapter 4 and 28, you know, their deeds have surpassed the deeds of the wicked. And who was the wicked? Malachi 1 and 4. That's right. He saw Edom, the border of wickedness. You know? Because Jake would have made wasn't one of your homicide crucified. Even yeah. Pontius Pilate was like, man, y'all sure? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, he a demon. He's an Edomite. Yeah. He's of this, he's of the dragon. But even this nigga was like, y'all sure y'all want to do this? You know what I'm saying? Right. So Jake even took it further, even beyond. You know? Mm -hmm. uh, go ahead, wherever we was reading, wherever we were at. Was that all you had? Uh, but when you keep going, that's that, that was the point. Uh, how, how, he went, they go, how he killed... How you oh, killed the, the children? Oh, yeah. And why it was the, the woman shall reap for... Go ahead. Yeah, 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 it's a little more to that. Matthew 2 and 9, it says, When they had heard the king, and they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. So these three wise men were, were, were moved through the spirit to come over here, all right, to wait for this child to be born, okay? And it's going to go into what they did when they saw it, Okay. Go ahead. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. Mm-hmm. And read why? Because it, it could have easily said Joseph, his father. But you got to remember, in Isaiah 7 and 14, the prophecy talked about a young woman mm -hmm. that was to bear a child. You know what I'm saying? And these wise men were privy to that prophecy in Isaiah the seventh chapter. You know, so it had to expound on it that way, you know, because that was going into the young woman that bore that child whose name was called Emmanuel, God with us, mm -hmm. you know, and the irony of that star being right there or that chariot, as the brother Shapal just went into, man, what also dwelled over the tabernacle, the chariot, the right. you know, the chariot hovered right over the tabernacle, <laughs> just as the star hovered right mm -hmm. over that manger Yahweh was born in, bro. Okay. The essence of the Heavenly Father's glory was right there. Oh, man. You know? Go ahead. Back in the middle of uh, verse 11 in Matthew 2, he <laughs> says, And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, mm -hmm. and frankincense, and myrrh, and being warned of the Most Which, High. And also, I'm going to say this as well. That's also, um, you know what I'm saying, um, shows you as well that, you know, Yahweh shot spirits is Melchizedek. Abraham did the same thing. Mm -hmm. But even the heathen in the mm -hmm. kingdom of heaven, yeah. even the heathen in the kingdom of heaven are going to have to come bearing gifts, you know, when they come into Jerusalem. Isaiah 60. You know, Isaiah the 60th chapter, the forces of the Gentiles. Yep. <laughs> That's right, bro. They're going to have to come bearing those gifts. Beautiful, bro. Right. Go ahead. Verse 12. And being warned of Yahweh in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Right, right, right. And that goes into them going into Egypt, yeah. which Hosea the 11th chapter talks about how the Lord came from Egypt. Right. Okay, loosely paraphrased, but that's going into how Yahabashai, you know, was brought to Egypt. And from Egypt, yeah. you know, after his third year, he was brought back into the land, yep. not Bethlehem, nope. but Nazareth. That's right. That's right. All right, where he could continue to fulfill his role being the branch or the Nazar, yeah. which is Nazareth, that branch. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. This is um, verse 13. 
Oh, it's lucky. Uh, uh, yeah, verse 13. And when they departed, uh, begin, uh, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child, his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. There you go. There you go. And when you continue, we don't got to get it, but that was the point. When they tried to search for him and Herod and those those Edomites, because best believe it wasn't Herod that was over there. Where is he at? Kicking doors in, right. breathing hard and shit. You know, Herod was sitting on his throne, but he passed that commitment. Mm -hmm. Kill him. Yeah. You know? That's so why, oh, go why, ahead, bro. No, you got that's it. That's why in the beginning it said that he was troubled when mm -hmm. he heard, heard about Yahweh's birth. That's right. Because yeah. you gotta gotta think about it. This is Herod we're talking about, whose mother was a Jew. Mm -hmm. You know, so he's sitting on the power seat, right? He's sitting on the throne. And you got these people murmuring, well, not, not murmuring, but whispering here and there, or even him hearing about the coming of this messianic figure that was to come. You know what I'm saying? Like he had to have been privy to that. You know what I'm saying? And you can, I'm speaking as a man, but I believe through the spirit, like around that time, before he even knew about it, it had to have been messing with his mind like a mug. And you know how this, the Lord will knock on your door before things happen? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You'll have this feeling of something. And then later on, something transpires. Mm -hmm. So again, I speaking as a man when I say it, but he, he had to been constantly like harping on it and meditating on it about, yo, and then it happened. You know what I'm saying? So he tried to go to his next move, which was do the same thing Pharaoh did, you know, in the time of Moses and to slay those newborn or those, those young boys from the age of what, two to three years old. Yep. You know, same thing happened. And it also goes to show you that Yahweh Shai is the prophet like it unto Moses. Because yep. literally the same thing happened. Well, I was just thinking that. Moses in Egypt as a young man. Yep. Yahabashai in Egypt as a young man. The, the covenant being reinstituted with Yahabashai as it was instituted with Moses. And then their, their, fucking, their fucking trials in their, in their, what's the word that I'm looking for? Their plight. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? That, had, that, that, that counted, bro. So Yahabashai is a prophet likened unto Moses in so many different ways that are so obvious when they're really in tune with the spirit. Okay, but going back to the point, not that we're veering away, right. as we've expounded, yeah, Matthew right. 2 was just brought up. Okay, Shalom, bro. Shalom. Uh, yeah, Shalom. Shalom. Yeah, how about Just listen how, yeah. just quickly, uh, how you said it may have played Herod in the mind, like, no, like having dreams and things. Mm -hmm. It was, uh. Right, he was having dreams. Yeah. So it like it. No, nah, it, yeah. it was a movie, uh, mm -hmm. and I don't even know the name of it, but I know it's dealing with, you know, the Lord, but. Hey, I don't know y'all know Kelsey Grammer as being Herod, and he was like running out, like kind of the streets, falling over with like his head, like he was he was dreaming, bugging the hell he was out, bugging bro. the hell out. The and yeah, the Lord was bugging the hell out. And they showed him when he saw with the wise men, you know, he saw when he's adding on to the book, the three wise, and he showed mm -hmm. up just wise men. But yeah, he, right, right, right. He basically come, you know, hey, let me know when, when you know you find him, and I'll come and, and give praise to him and everything as well. Mm -hmm. Same thing we just went into in Matthew too. Facts. Yeah. Beautiful point, beautiful point, bro. So, so somebody asks right there because we're gonna go back to Revelation twelve. All right, somebody asks, how can you prove that that dragon right there and casting the child? How can you prove that? These are scriptures to prove that. Obviously, people ain't gonna get it and they're still gonna scoff. Right, right. But that way, you can be prepared to answer skillfully. You know what I'm saying? Right off the head. You know what I'm saying? When somebody goes into it. Because as much people can scoff, they can't go into the science of it. They don't got a spirit of it. We do. You know what I'm saying? So that that those are precepts to go to, to, to prove going into that. All right? Now, can you read verse 3? Because you, we, we, you read, can you read? Four. Okay. Read, read, that and then read verse line. 3 again because we forgot to go into Daniel 7. Okay. Got it. Can you hold Daniel 7 and 7, Bubba Kishore? The water. I, was, I was gonna make a quick point just Please. to land back, bro, because even even you I now you said yesterday, and I believe you say from time to time that um, you know, one way to confound people that come up with questions to you is to just ask them what it means. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's that they simple. Won't yep. They won't know. Yeah. It's that simple because they they they'll stumble or they'll break it down, but then it's like, where can you find it at? Exactly. You know? Right, right. And they ain't had nowhere to find it. Nowhere. Can you read that in verse 3 again? And then we'll jump to Daniel 7 and 7. Uh, Revelation chapter 12 and verse 3. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. Now pause. 
right here he explains his dragon, the second wonder, having seven heads and ten horns. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. This is Daniel 7 and 7. It says, And this I saw the night vision, and beheld a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly. A fourth beast. All right, not the Babylonians, not the Medio Persians, not the Greeks, all right, who are still Edomites, mm -hmm. but it's going into this fourth beast, dreadful and terrible. Go ahead. Right. It says, uh, <clears throat> dreadful and uh, terrible and exceedingly, and strong exceedingly. And why? What made, what made him so much more dreadful and exceedingly strong and terrible versus the other ones? His military. Mm -hmm. Okay? Even when around the time, when you go into the time of the Greeks, all right, which you had... Israelites and I'm sorry, clans of Edomites scattered everywhere. Even those Romans are still Edomites, right. but that was around the time period where those Romans was really pushing forth that smoke and that fear. You know, say so you can read about it in the Maccabees. You can read about it in Daniel the eleventh chapter about the ships of Chittim. You know, what I'm saying that that pretty much stopped the king of the north from coming in, fulfilling his enterprise. You know, what I'm saying those Romans came with that. Excuse my French, but that motherfucking smoke. That's right. You know what I'm saying? That came with that smoke. And that's when that's going into that military might. That's what made them exceedingly stronger than those other beasts that was prior. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Go ahead. If I, can, if I can add real quick, because that goes back to that Genesis uh, 27 and 41. That by that sword. That sword. Like that. That's right. So that's it's beautiful. Been, it's been cultivating over time to where yes. it's grown stronger. But then, like you said, it need be for the prophecy sake that there was a time where it kind of settled down. Mm -hmm. dark age, and then the dark ages and then going into the renaissance where now it's at the point today where they have the, the fatness of the earth they, and, you know, hell yeah they handing out smoke yeah. and even Russia over here handing out smoke it's a smoke Man. competition yeah, it's between it's Gog and the whore mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying go ahead uh, this is verse in the middle verse great seven. point bro this is, mm -hmm. and it had great iron teeth it devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. Right, right. Stamped the residue. And a lot of this was even through persuasion. And if it wasn't done through persuasion, it was done through the sword. Okay? Because you can read about the conquest of Antiochus the Great, who was also Antiochus the Third, the father of Epiphanes. And just going into it, how he tried to fight against those 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 nations from those islands and different parts of, you know, realm, the realm of Greece and the Aegean. Okay? And when he did that, those Russians came on the scene like, nigga, what? Took his son and held his ass hostage. You know what I'm saying? Held his ass hostage, bro. You know what I'm saying? It came to a point where the um, the Seleucids had to pay tribute to those Romans just so Antiochus Epiphanes could get let loose out of jail pretty much. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're actually before Antiochus Epiphanes was even emperor, his big brother, uh, Seleucus... Uh, it was Seleucus, um, not Calanus, it was Seleucus Philometer. Seleucus Philometer reigned in the stead of his father, Antiochus III, for about 12 years. And it talks about it in Daniel, how this particular king of the north put taxes on the people. Taxes on top of taxes of those subjects that are under him, because them taxes was going to Rome. Yeah. They was going to them Romans, that Sunday asses pretty much. You know, and these are the conquests of those Romans of how they solidified or imprinted their influence like, yeah, nigga, we here. You know what I'm saying? So even those Greeks who are still Edomites, but out of the clan of those Greeks, those Edomites, they were in fear of those Romans like, hail to the no, to the no, no. And when Julius Caesar came into the scene, you know, who also was a priest of that influence of those fucking Babylonian priests, you know what I'm saying? Oh, man, it goes. It's, it's, when you research Julius Caesar and his priesthood it, it, and just the Roman priesthood and how that stems back to ancient Babylon, it makes all the much more sense why those Romans are considered the dragon, the seed of this serpent, bro. Because there was so much finagled witchcraft and ideology and idolatry that was spread through the fucking Roman priesthood, bro. Roman it's ridiculous. Church. Look at the Roman Catholic Church. You talk about the Pope in his entire day. All that stems back. To what those Roman emperors did around the time of Pax Romana, starting with Julius Caesar, bro. Because he played the role as a priest, which was also, he was not only a priest, but he was a high priest. And the name of that was called um, Pontifex Maximus. Mm -hmm. All right, because you had a pontiff 
who was just a priest, a Roman priest. But then you get elevated, like you had the priest and the high priest, you get elevated to the role of Pontifex Maximus. And Julius Caesar had that, okay? And who was the, the, the first feather that you read about in 2nd Ezra 11 and also the middle head of those three heads of the eagle. Right. You know what I'm saying? It really shows you the influence from the serpent that was spread to that Roman Empire when you look at the history and when you understand books like 2nd Ezra 11. You Can know I, what I'm saying? Bring it out. Look like you got a banger, bro. <laughs> I see your eyes twitching, bro. <laughs> 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 nah, nah. This is that, uh, I saw that twitch, bro. It's a lock it, man. It's a lock it. I'm, I'm playing. Hey. Hey, nah, this is that um, second Andrew chapter 11, I'm going to start verse 41. It says, For the earth hath thou not judged in truth. Uh, so like, for the earth hath, hath thou not judged with truth. It says, For thou hast afflicted the meek, thou hast hurt the peaceable, thou, thou hast loved liars. There you go, and if I may, really quick. Uh, you know, because because one might not understand second Ezra 11, but there's, if you type in Great, great Millstone, Second Ezra 11 chapter breakdown. There's a breakdown that's there. Okay. And when you go into that precept that the brother's expounding on, it's another precept to tie to Revelation 12 and 3. Right. What was just read? Matthew 11 and 12. Yep. All right. The kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violent take it by force. This right here is going into that eagle in Second Ezra 11 and how they hurt the meek of the earth. This is going into when the third part of those stars was cast to the ground. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi being brought down in submission under the Roman Empire or this fourth beast that we're still going to go into, by the way. Huh. Okay? Go ahead, Tisha. All right. Uh, it says, uh, 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 and, and destroyed the dwelling of them that brought forth fruit and had cast down the walls of such as did thee no harm. Right. Cast down the walls of such as did thee no harm. That's going into the Romans, bro. Right. All right. And then when you go into when Jerusalem was taken down, you know, now they didn't do them no harm, but that don't change the fact that Jacob fitted the heavenly father. That's right. And prophecy had to take place at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Even how Shai said, shall not one stone be unturned. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we say, we don't just say the temple of Jerusalem was seized. Mm -hmm. No, Jerusalem was seized. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Not one stone shall be left unturned. Jerusalem was broke the fuck down. That's right. Excuse my French. Jerusalem was broke the hell down. Okay. Was that it on that? Uh, I, I can continue reading. Uh, I believe that, that man was the, was the point because we wanted to just stick to uh, it. You know what I'm saying? For time's sake. So. For, 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 no, I saw for time's sake. And also, too, if for those of you all that want to know, there's a breakdown on 2nd Ezra 11 for Great Millstone that's posted. That way you can get the understanding on that. Okay. Not to dismiss no. great precept, but just want to because just want to stick to these right here because a few more precepts huh. they still got to get brought out for this lesson to bring it home. Go ahead. Huh. Like in uh, Daniel seven and seven, it says, "And behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, and exceed strong exceedingly, and it had a great iron teeth. It devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it, mm -hmm. and it was diverse from all the beasts. Can anybody explain, other than the military, what made this beast so much diverse than all the other beasts? They had a Senate government. Man, Senate and Caesars. <laughs> Senate and Caesars. That's right. That's right. Because versus a monarchy who was set up pretty much if you was the son of a king, you could have been the worst piece of shit. Don't know judgment. Don't know rulership. I always think about the show Game of Thrones where you had um, <laughs> Geoff, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Right, a little, yeah. little young, little yeah. young little king blonde, who's blonde. <laughs> little blonde hair, blue eyed demon. The one that got poisoned. Right? The one that got poisoned, little piece of shit. And that's what was happening to a lot of those monarchs, mm -hmm. those kings. They was poisoned. They like, man, this little motherfucker, man. <laughs> this not, it's the king. Yeah. But when those Romans came into the scene, you know, they instituted a whole new different way to bring a king in. To have power over them, and that was through the Senate. Oh. Instead of a little G Geoffrey nigga mm -hmm. being brought into the scene, there was actually another person who was well more qualified to be voted in. All right, and that was instituted and, and thought of, and the idea was stemmed forth from what you call the first triumvirate. All right, which was created to prevent a monarchy from taking place. Okay, that first triumvirate consisted of Julius Caesar. 
Uh, you can really say the second triumphant really, really held strong mm -hmm. to it and implemented it. But it started with the first triumphant with uh, Julius Caesar, mm -hmm. Marcus Crassius, and General Pompey. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you know, around that, there was a Senate that was created before, but that first triumphant was set in place to put a halt to that completely. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then the second triumphant with his son Augustus, who was also the Caesar that was alive during the birth of of Yahavashai, who he went also went by Octavian. Yep. All right, you got Octavian, Mark Antony, and also um, it was um, I think his name was um, uh, Lepus. You know what I'm saying that that enforced it. All right, and and with that second triumvirate, that was the start of what you considered the peace of Rome for those 200 years of what they call Pax Romana. Okay, and that was during the time period that you can read about Second Ezra the 11th chapter. Okay, the time where though the violent took us by force, which shows that it's a hypocrisy within itself, because it was called the peace of Rome, you know, but it wasn't peace. It made you think that with God, even within the past couple hundred years or so, mm -hmm. they made all these was like two hundred sixty different treaties. Mm -hmm. and broke damn near every single one. Every single one, mm -hmm. and that shows you why every time this devil will say peace and safety, every time they speak peace, war is in his heart. That's right. It's always a lie that's hidden in the midst of that. Psalm Mm-hmm. Gone. So um, continue that in Daniel 7, and we can jump back to Revelation 12. This is back in Daniel 7 and in the end of verse 7. This is a precept to go to to prove to people who will say, well, how do you know what that beast is with seven heads and ten horns in Daniel 7 to say it's the Romans? Daniel 7. I, I keep saying Daniel for Revelation, but you know what I mean. Revelation 12 to Daniel 7. You know, you got it. Huh. It says in, uh, in a Daniel 7 and 7, it says, And it was uh, diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. Ten horns. It don't say seven heads, but it don't have to. <laughs> it don't have to. This is the same wonder that John saw. Just as John saw this wonder in heaven of this beast that looked like this. Daniel saw the same thing right. prior. Daniel saw the same thing a thousand something odd years, not even a thousand, some, 500 something odd years prior. Daniel saw the same thing. You know what I'm saying? So that's a precept to go to to prove that. Okay? So one can still ask, okay, but I'm still waiting for this serpent here. Now you read verse four already, right, Chapal? You already read through the whole thing? So now we have a firm, solidified understanding on this dragon. And who this dragon is and how this dragon is the Roman Empire, who were Edomites, by the way, right? Yeah. Now, let's jump to verse 9 in Daniel 12. Uh, Somebody hold uh, Revelation 13. Start from the top. Sure. What, what verse was that in Revelation 12? What verse? Yeah. 12 and, um, Revelation 12 and uh, 6 when we go into the woman fled. Okay. Why? You read, we read 6 already? No, we was on 4. Okay. We okay. read 4. We read 4. We no, were about 10 horns. Yeah, that was, yeah. In, that was in the third chapter. Mm -hmm. The fourth, I'm sorry, the, 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 the third verse, the fourth verse goes into Herod okay. and how he had pretty much, you know, go ahead. Kind of, kind of. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out. The great dragon, right? Okay, so now I was going into this dragon just so we remind the understanding of it. Mm -hmm. The fourth beast. Yep. Okay, you got it. That old serpent called the devil. Yeah. Can you read that part again? And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent. Called the devil. So when somebody asks, how can you prove that that serpent is the Romans, Esau, Edom, pretty much? Revelation 12 and 9. That old serpent. So that dragon was transformed into an old serpent. You had the serpent, and then you had the seed of the serpent, which is the dragon. Okay? Which is Esau, Edom. And what makes him that serpent, because it says, who is also the devil and Satan. All right? Now, we know that this is talking about a physical incarnate on the planet Earth. But this is who's coming is after the working of Satan. All right. Somebody can hold 2 Thessalonians 2 as well. Okay. This is he who's coming is after the working of Satan. People will have you thinking that is this one figure that's to come and pronounce himself saying, I am Christ, the Antichrist, mm -hmm. which we know that there is an anti-Messiah anti energy. Right. All right. We know that. Mm -hmm. Okay. But they'll have you thinking that there is this one particular person that's going to come and say, I am he who's no, mm -hmm. this is a nation of people on the planet Earth. Right. The Edomites, who sits the, the chief hegemon of that, are their wise men. 
the Illuminati. Okay, yeah, those right. those inter those 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 banking families. That's right. Okay, these are the Chaldeans. Then you have Babylon, which is the glory of the Chaldeans, the woman that sit upon the the, the, the beast. The scarlet color and the beast having what? Seven heads and ten horns that you read about in Revelation, the 17th chapter. That's right. Okay. And who's the woman? America. Right. But the whole beast, the whole woman, even Gog, Magog, that's going to fight against it. These are still yeah. Edomites at the end of the day. That's right. All right. This is the seed of the serpent who's coming is after the working of Satan. Mm -hmm. Okay. The only way for this devil to be moved with Creating a, a not even just a not even just a gun, but a, a hand grenade, bazooka, yeah. missiles, silos, nuclear missiles. That is a miracle right there. That's a miracle Man, to know how to, to to practice it. Anybody still got that Michael two held as well? Okay, had that held on deck too. And we we can we don't gotta be too much longer with this. All right, but just establishing the point of how we can tie Esau Edom to being the serpent. That beguiled the seed of the serpent, I should say, that would have enmity between the seed of the woman. Okay. Revelation 12 is a key chapter to go into the enmity between the seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman. Talked about the woman in great travail. All right. How she bore a child. Okay. Talks about that. All right. Where are we at right now? Revelation 12 and 9. Revelation 12 and 9. Go ahead. Uh, Revelation chapter 12 and 9. It says, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent. Called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. Which deceiveth the whole world. Okay, anybody got that second Thessalonians 2 held? Okay, you okay, start at verse uh, 7, Baba Gashore. The second Thessalonians 2 and verse 7. Because it says that the devil and Satan, but mm -hmm. the devil just means deceiver. Mm -hmm. And Satan means adversary or enmity, enmity, I'm sorry, enemy, or one to have enmity with. Mm -hmm. Just as Genesis 3 said. Okay, go ahead. Start at verse 6. Okay. It says, And behold, ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. In his time. Because what had to happen? The deadly, the, the beast had to be brought down, mm -hmm. and the deadly wound had to be healed. You don't think Paul didn't have understanding of that? Right. Paul personally supped with Yahweh Shai for three years. Right. As Yahweh Shai was glorified, by the way. You know what I'm saying? Not how he supped with those 12 men, which those 12 men, minus Judas, we're special, you know what I'm saying? We're very special, you know? So not excluding, you know, their specific exclusive role in this thing of ours, because those are special men, you know what I'm saying? But on top of that, Paul supped with Yahweh you know, as he was in the spirit. This is the chief angel, the second in command in existence to come down in his glorified form and teach somebody. Paul had understand about this, bro. Paul knew, That's right. you know what I'm saying? Go ahead. Like you said, even before his time or something, because he had the mystery. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it says it made sense 44. why he had to know what he had to know, because he was teaching Gentiles, bro. Mm -hmm. Teaching Israelites that had to come out of that state. The Lord used Paul as a crucial catalyst to bring his breath into people. That's right. That, were, that didn't have no understanding. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was a significant role that the Apostle Paul carried, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, he was a tool used for the breath to be brought into dry bones, bro. Mm -hmm. You know? Go ahead. In 2 Thessalonians 2 and 7, it says, For the mystery of iniquity do already work. Only he who know let it will let. Now, it says the mystery of iniquity doeth already work. The Romans were already in power, putting Jake in rocks between hard places and shit. That's right. You know? Jake was catching hell. We just read about the dragon and how the dragon had wrath on the woman. Not right? So Paul clearly said, look, the mystery of iniquity already works. Okay? But go ahead. It says, only he who know let his lip will now, let. Who now, who now. I believe he who now let it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, he said no. Only he who now let it will let it. Come I said, until he be taken out of the way. Right, right, right. So the Heavenly Father, all right, had to allow all this to take place for prophecy to be fulfilled. Because there was a story that was all written, something that we all got to remember. Right. Not that we forgot, right. but it all played out in the spirit already. That's right. You know what I'm saying? It's just played out in the flesh. 
Okay, so he had to allow this to take place. Mm -hmm. All right, the beast had to play his role. The dragon had to play his role. Rain held down on this woman. The deadly wound to be stricken upon this dragon, that thousand year period, and then the deadly wound had to be healed where he was going to be let loose for that short season. That had to be allowed to take place. But Paul said, hey, he's still working right now at this moment. Okay, but it's going to come to a point where he is going to be revealed. All right, which shows the ministry that we have, starting with the apostles and elders on down. People can say and talk all the shit that they want to in the world. But as we speak in these prophecies, they come to pass. That's right. That's right. And that counts. You know, we're playing a very significant role in this thing of ours. Can you, I'm, 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 I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. The seed of the woman starts with Yahavashai, but the elect are following suit right behind. That's bro. right. That's not so, no, I saw good. So, this enmity that we're talking about. Is literally going into this devil, his elites at that, that's right. against little old us. That's wisdom of Solomon 10. Starting with Yahweh Shai. That's wisdom of Solomon 10. We do not got to get it right now. <laughs> but it's a beautiful wisdom of Solomon 10. The reason why I said it that way is because the whole chapter goes into it. The <laughs> whole the chapter. chapter. So that's why I said it that way, <laughs> not dismissing that idea. You know what I'm saying? Read wisdom of Solomon 10 if you think we bullshitting. Read it. Not that you think that. You know what I'm saying? But I dare you to read it whenever the spirit hits you. Right. You know? Okay? So let's jump back to where we left off at. Like 2 Thessalonians 2 and 8. It says, And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. And the wicked is being revealed now. So the Heavenly Father had to allow it. But guess what? The beast had to be wounded. That's right. The deadly wound had to be healed of this serpent. The old serpent that it was talked about in Revelation, the 12th chapter. All right. Which we still, I know there's still more on that one. But when you read it in verse 10, just to abridge it, it goes in to the accuser of our brethren. Now is our salvation come after the accuser of our brethren is cast down. So it goes to show you Revelation 12 is a time of Yahweh Shai. But when you read it, it goes into the future. It goes into us being brought in captivity. It goes right back to the past. It goes right back to the end. That's why you got to have a spiritual mind. You have to have a spiritual mind to really comprehend it and understand it. Right. And something else to consider as well, man, those people that wrote these together, like there were minds that came together and they had scrolls here and there and they did their best to combine them together. You know what I'm saying? So when you read about certain prophecies and how it dips in and dips out and everything, these are men that had records and notes of these papers and they just compiled it together through the spirit. You know, hey, and those men got to be commended. Yeah. They got to be commended, bro. You know, right. so, but, but again, I'm not saying that's the sole reason of why you see this here and there, but you could definitely include it. Like they did their best to put it together. And through the spirit, we have what we have here today through those minds. Okay. Hey, man, just as a footnote, hey, the Lord put the spirit on even an Edomite, bro. He was so intrigued by our doctrine the Lord put the spirit on an Edomite to grab Israelites from Judea and bring them over to Alexandria, Egypt. This is Ptolemy Philometer. Yeah, I'm sorry, Philopater. All right. Who also created the library of Alexandria. And he was so intrigued by how we worshiped and how we did things. They was like, you know what? Put this in the Greek. Put this in, translated from Hebrew to the Greek. And that's where you get the Septuagint from. Okay, but it goes to show you how the wine was always preserved, bro. Okay. It goes to show you how the Lord had it preserved. You said something, boss? Some kind of way the Lord did it, boy. Hey, that's mm -hmm. crazy. He took them out there for that reason. Mm -hmm. I have been. It makes sense. Just for that reason. When you read Daniel 11, yeah. man, bro. Whoo, it makes sense why the angel. Daniel 11 is not Daniel, bro. That is an angel. <laughs> that whole chapter is the angel of the Lord, bro. You know, so when you read that, it's like, okay, this is important than a mug. You know what I'm saying? Not that it ain't important to anybody else, but this is literally the angel of the Lord, right. Daniel 11, the angel of the Lord talking to Daniel, telling him how the earth was going to be given to the hands of the wicked. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? A mystery that a lot of theologians and such cannot attain, but only the elect. That's right. That's right. You know, go ahead, bro. Yeah. Back in 2 Thessalonians 2 and 8. I uh, said, and then shall the wicked be revealed, whom uh, the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, 
and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. It has to be consumed by the spirit of his mouth first. The prophecies. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Those prophets coming out there on the highways and the byways, being a terror unto Egypt, as the prophecies say in Isaiah 19. Revelation 11, great fear fell upon them. Okay? That had to take place. And then it says, and then we'll destroy with the brightness of his coming. Because we're telling them, Yahweh Shai is going to come back with the chariots. All right? We're telling them that. Okay? And he's coming back to what? Destroy him who pierced him. Who pierced him? Rome. The, <laughs> Esau. Gone, yep. Esau. All right? The beast. That's who pierced him, bro. Okay? Go ahead. Verse 9, it says, Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all his power and signs and lying wonders. Now it says, He whose coming is after the working of Satan. And this is also what shows you that that serpent, that old serpent, was inspired by the spiritual demon Satan. Mm -hmm. All right? Genesis 3, that was a form of he who came after the working of Satan. Because we know it wasn't the spiritual demon Satan that beguiled Eve, it was a witch. It was somebody who came after the working of Satan. So this seed that's here that came from the serpent is doing the same thing that his father did. The only difference is he's not just a serpent no more, but he's a fucking dragon having seven heads and ten horns. Okay? I'm saying to a whole system. Mm -hmm. To a whole system. Exactly. Exactly. Which transformed to worldwide. Which transformed worldwide to a beast that worshipped that dragon. Which is what we're about to go into. Okay? But this is what it's talking about in 2 Thessalonians 2. This ain't talking about no physical antichrist figure that Christianity and left behind books and shit are going to say that this is he who's coming. No, that is a nation of people right. whose coming was after the working of Satan. That is anti-Messiah. Okay? That's what that's going into. And when you go into that word working there in the Greek, it's pronounced energia, which is where you get the word energy from. All right, which goes to show you that this dragon, this nation of people are coming literally after the energy of the spiritual demon Satan, just as we're coming after the energy of the heavenly father. We went into it in the beginning of class, the wisdom in wisdom of Solomon 7, Sirach 24. That is the inspiration of the almighty or the breath we've been given. They've been given an inspiration too. And that comes from their father. All right, the spiritual demon Satan. That's why, again, it makes all the much sense when you read it. In, I got you. When you read it in Revelation 12, John said, I saw two wonders. This woman right here, which is Israel, Jacob, and this dragon right here, which is Esau. Jacob and Esau, those are the two wonders that John saw in Revelation 12. Because they were going to play their rule, their roles, ruling over the whole planet Earth. All right. And one of them was going to have an energy of righteousness, of course, because even two thirds are wicked. Okay, but out of the creme de la creme of the woman, they're going to come after the working of Yahweh Shai. All right. And these people are going to come after the working or the energy of Satan. All right. Before you bring your precept out, Tazama, Micah chapter two, verse one, because we went into the definition of the word serpent. And one of the definitions means practice. Okay. So we can go to Micah. We've been holding. That's what that, that's why we've been holding it for a minute. But after afterward, we can bring yours out. You can go ahead, Amathia. Bring it out. Right. Mm. This is well, whoever had it, had it damn it. Yeah, 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 go ahead. Two, yeah. One. Yeah. It says, Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. Right, so, uh, we we should all majority know what woe means, but for you newer listeners, it means destruction and death who work iniquity upon their beds. Now, what does that mean? It's always dwelling in wickedness. What are you talking about? The iniquity upon the bench party? Right. Yeah, they all constantly devising ways to tear down Israel. Tear down Jacob. Got you. Got you. And namely, upon their beds is going into that rest. Right. Okay? That's going into their period of rest or their heaven that they're yep. in right now. Right. How are they falling from heaven or Lucifer? Go ahead, Tom. Uh, the scripture says in Psalm 49, it says, uh, they, shall rest, they shall rest upon their beds, their beds in glory. Exactly. Exactly. That is their glory right now that they're in. Them being in the state of heaven. All right, so they have the ability to come up with the lies and the slander. All right, to categorize you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, as the brother Tazama said, change times and seasons. All right, this is how they're able to do it because they're in their rest to be able to do it. All right, to come up with foods to break down you Israelites' genetic makeup. All right, to conspire the so called black woman Eve 
all right, to come in the Israelite woman in general to come up against you Israelite men by giving them, you know, programs and such to make them feel like they the shit. All right. All these are ways or things that they've done. All right. To work iniquity upon their beds. Because matter of fact, continue. OK, continuing on in Micah chapter two, verse one, it says that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds when the morning is light. They practice it because it is in the power of their hand. They practice it because it is in the power of their hands. What is the practicing? The witchcraft. Okay. Nakash. Okay. The word serpent means to practice. All right. In Genesis 3. Okay. So this is how they're coming after the working of Satan. They're practicing it. Now, when you go into the word uh, practice here in the Hebrew, I forgot how it's pronounced, but it literally means to work. He who's coming is after the working of Satan. All right. That is their ability to practice divination and cast stumbling blocks upon you Israelites and not even just Israel, but the whole known world. He who's coming is after the working of Satan. This is the dragon right here, man. OK, so that was it on that precept. Tazamai, you got yours and we can end this off in Revelation 13. All right. This is Psalm Unless anybody else got something. This is Psalm 144, verse 7. And I'm going to read down to verse uh, 11. It says, send thine hand, it says, send thine hand from above, rid me and deliver me out of great waters from the hand of strange children. Now, I want to get that word, mm -hmm. I want to get that word strange in the Hebrew real quick. And uh, just to land back off what the, what the priest is going into, because we don't, this is, this is the seed of Satan. Right. right. Uh, that word strange here in the Hebrew is nakar. Right. Nakar. And that word strange there means uh, uh, it says foreign god of the land, foreigner. See, uh, a foreign. So these are these are strange children who worship and literally work based upon ancient witchcraft or ancient gods of Hamitic gods, right? You know, uh, ancient Sumeria, Egyptian, all in Esau right now ruling in America and throughout the whole planet Earth, and uses America as the spirit is. That's right. He pushes forth. That's why this place is called the mother of all harlots. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And this yeah. place is usually, this not usually, I'm going to say this place is set up upon witchcraft in every facet that you look at. Right? That's right, bro. That's right. It says, send thy hand from above, rid me and deliver me out of the great waters from the hand of strange children, whose mouth, excuse me, whose mouth speaketh villain, uh, whose mouth speaketh vanity, and their right hand is a right hand of falsehood. Mm -hmm. There you go. Mm -hmm. And that that is that falsehood is coming from the throne still. It's still coming from the Father. It's just from his left hand. Now it says the right hand of falsehood because right just means strength. Mm -hmm. But that don't mean that it's literally coming from the Father's right hand. That is their strength, falsehood. All right. right, the energy from the left hand side. Just as it was expounded earlier in this lesson before bros got here, it was mentioned those, those wizards and those priests of Egypt. Right. Okay, that was left handed energy that they used to turn those staffs into those serpents. But that was their strength. They had the ability to do that. All right, just as the dragon today has the ability to cast forth these miracles, as it was read in Second Thessalonians two. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. you got to touch. Like the right hand, you know, if you go into uh, like a right hand, like false swearing. Mm -hmm. You know, when you go into the, that word right hand in the Hebrew, yum yum, which means like a, like to, to swear. Mm -hmm. And what what are the, what do these leaders so called do? They put their right hand on the Bible and swear, which is the right hand of falsehood. That's right. They're not going to uphold any of the law, such as the commandments. Right. Because they're of the seed of Satan, they're ad they're adverse to righteousness. That's right, bro. Right? Yes. So yes. deception is their is their power. Then, that's right? Th mm -hmm. that's right, bro. That right. is their, that is their spiritual power. Mm -hmm. Just right. as righteousness is the elects, to you know, what I'm saying them. being fair. All right, theirs is literally. That's why it said in Revelation twelve, the devil and Satan. Right. You know, what I'm saying it said the devil and Satan in Revelation twelve, yeah. the deceiver and the adversary. You mm -hmm. know, what I'm saying. Uh, continuing on, verse 9, I'll like read on verse 11. I will sing a new song unto thee, O Most High, upon a psaltery and an instrument of ten strings will I sing praises unto thee. Which we already know the new song is going, not we already know, but you know, this new song is going into this gospel being preached. It is he, it is he that giveth salvation unto kings, who delivered David, his servant, from the hurtful sword. Verse 11, point, rid me and deliver me from the hand of strange children, whose mouth speaketh vanity, 
and the right hand is a right hand the false. You repeated that in the, in the seventh verse. Yeah. Like yeah, you week. repeated it again. Yeah, look, yeah, right. look, watch Jesus. We're we asking the Lord to rid us from this these strange children, man. Beautiful. You know, Beautiful. and these strange they, 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 that's we don't call the so-called <laughs> white man the devil and say just for shits and giggles, man. Mm -hmm. You know, when you come out on the highways and byways early on, you know, you you know, you so called white people the devil, you say you say it. Cause you know you hear everybody else say it, but <laughs> as we get older and we, we we see what's going on, this nigga's the devil. This right. this is the devil, bro. Right. right? You know what I'm saying? Like this man, look what this man is doing right now on a on a worldwide scale. Mm -hmm. Completely lying on everything. Like, I'm reading the NLT, and this is it. Save me, rescue me from the power of my enemies. Their mouths are full of lies. <laughs> they swear to tell the truth, but they lie instead. Mm -hmm. You got. It. Like Bond said, bro, that is their that is their power, you know. On top of the miracles that they do, which is their technology, their ability to create weaponry that mm -hmm. far exceeds any other nation, this is what they've been given on the left hand side. After the working of Satan, there wasn't no damn Moabites that came up with the equation to to to, to split an atom. Right. All right, they didn't come up with the equation to create what's called nuclear fission. All right, these were those Temanites, man. Those 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 Germans. Right. Which those Germans, all right, act as vassals under the uh, under the beast. That's right. Under the woman. That's right. Germanic tribes. When you read about it and uh, about the old beast, they're here today, That's right. playing the same role, helping to aid the woman. The same thing, you know. That was it on that task. Yep. We, we could jump to Revelation the thirteenth chapter, unless anybody has anything else. Uh, okay. Oh, for sure, for sure. And I think we are uh, kind of quoted it, but this is uh, Psalms 58. And uh, I'll start at the verse. I'll start at the top. It says, Do ye in uh, verse 1, do ye indeed speak righteousness, O congregation? Do ye judge uprightly, O ye sons of men? Ye in the, uh, yea, in the heart ye work wickedness. Yea, weigh the violence of your hands in the earth. Mm. Hey, and it says, Weigh the violence of the hand of the earth. And that's basically is pursuing or using their blessing. Right. Basically the sword. And now what is the sword today? You can say their big sword is now is what? The the uh, nuclear bomb. Mm -hmm. You know, so that is him spreading out through these uh skirmishes and the and the their military might and they pursuing all this the powerful destruction that they can bring about the earth that the Lord allowed them to have because he gave them that wisdom. That's right, that's right. And just just to add to that, bro, it just goes into how his hand is in the pot. He has the power to distribute who gets what. Right. Weighing the balance of the earth in your hands. Meaning yeah. you have the power to say, you can get this portion. You can get that portion. You get this portion. I get this portion. The earth is given into the hands of the wicked. He has the balance of the earth in his hands. He has the power to distribute whatever he, he needs to. You know what I'm saying? That That's that's what that's going into. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Not just, just to add and expound, you know, add yeah. to your point. Like the Rock 10. You know, mm -hmm. the way it goes, the, the, uh, the kingdom goes, the way of the king goes. Like exactly. Uh, exactly. Uh, uh, verse 3 says, The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. Their poison is like a poison of a serpent. They are like the deaf adder that stoppeth the ear. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it goes into like that, going into, it's like a serpent. It's a representation. And Esau is what? Uh, that serpent in here is the spirit of what? Yeah. Esau eat him what they right. received today. Right. Man, uh, real quick, because I know we, we mentioned this earlier. I, I'm glad I uh, remembered it. Anybody said like a Jeremiah 8 hill? I'll read it. Jeremiah 8, I think 21 actually. I have it here. Okay. This is Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 21. It says, For the hurt of the daughter of my people and my hurt, I am black as I am black. Astonishment. Is it in verse holiness. 17? It might be in 17. Which, uh... Yes, that's it. Yes. Yeah, this is, um... Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 17. For behold, I will send serpents, cockatrices among you, which shall... Excuse me. Which will not be charmed, and they shall bite you, saith Yahweh. Now, what is a cockatrice? A serpent. Yeah. Okay. Now, when you go into Jeremiah's ministry, Jeremiah's ministry... He was letting Jake know that they was gonna Jerusalem was gonna be brought down and it was, it was gonna be ruled over, you know, and uh, subjugated by the Babylonians. But so you can't dismiss or discredit these cockatrices right here, because if Jake was gonna be under mystery Babylon and have to serve under this beast, which is a dragon, that old serpent, 
cockatrices would have to be among us this day. That's right. Just as it was amongst us back then. That's right. All right. So that has to be applied right there. There are cockatrices that are surrounded by us daily. These mm -hmm. Israel, I'm sorry, these Edomites. Yep. Okay, just as the Babylonians were cockatrices there, these modern day Babylonians today of this whore yep. is Esau Edom. That's right. Okay, that's it on that one. Mm -hmm. Was that in your priest that you brought up earlier? Yeah. You said you had one, Shapar? Yeah, I got one. Okay. <clears throat> kind of just uh, land backing off of what the priest I was going into on um, basically how Esau Edom, they get their power from the left hand side. They get their power from, um, you know, mockery and and basically uh diminishing authority the authority that is you know basically um deception and all the things you know uh stated but i wanted to grab this just to go into it a little bit sirach 27 and i'm gonna start at verse um 27 it says he that worketh mischief right going back to that micah 2 working mischief upon their beds he that worketh mischief it shall fall upon him and he shall not know whence it cometh Mockery and reproach are from the proud, but vengeance as a lion shall lie and wait for them. Mm. <laughs> and we know Yahweh Shai being that, that uh, lion. Mm -hmm. It says, uh, they that rejoice at the fall of the righteous shall be taken in the snare, and anguish shall co consume uh, and anguish shall consume them before they die. Malice and wrath, even these are abominations, and the sinful man shall have them both. Mm. Man of sin, you know, mm -hmm. you saw Edom. Yeah, he's a, he fits the description. You know what I mean? That's right. That's right. Beautiful, beautiful. To the T. Bon, did you have anything, bro? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we can uh we can end this off here in Revelation thirteen. We can start from the top. Oh, wow. Thank you, bro. It's gonna it's gonna go right into this dragon, okay? Which in Revelation twelve and nine, he said that old serpent. Right. Which that old serpent is the serpent in Genesis the third chapter, who came after the working. Of the spiritual demon Satan. Okay. This is going into the seed of the serpent. Versus the seed of the woman. Alright. Go ahead. Yep. Mm -hmm. Revelation 13 and 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea. And saw a beast rise up out of the, out of the sea. Having seven heads and ten horns. You're in 13 right? Yeah Revelation 13. Now what does a sea represent? People. People. How can you prove it? Revelation, Revelation 17. 17. God, that's right. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, it says, and ten horns, and upon his horns, I mean, upon his horns, ten crowns, and upon his head, the name of blasphemy. Now it says, this beast right here, having what? Ten, ten heads, and ten seven horns. horns. I'm sorry, seven ten heads and ten horns. It's going into the Roman Empire. Yep. It's exactly what this is going into right here. Okay, the same beast we just read about in Revelation, the 12th chapter. All right, this is, uh, Daniel's having this vision of this continuation of the second wonder that he saw in heaven. Go ahead. It says, And upon his head the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear. Now, we can say uh, that first is going to Rome, but also, too, this is Rome mimic, which is America. All right. Can you go into the, quali the, the classifications of this beast again? No. It says, And I saw unto uh, a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear. So this is really the second beast, but it's going to go back to the first beast in a second. Mm -hmm. But it says of a leopard, right? Right. All right, which were those Greeks. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then it says a bear, right? Mm -hmm. Which was Rome. I'm sorry, not Rome. Russia, Russia. Gog and yeah. Magog. Yeah. You can read about that in Revelation, the 20th chapter as well. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, and his mouth is the mouth of a lion. All right. And the mouth of the lion really just represents the great things. All right, just as when you read in Daniel, the seventh chapter, the, 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 the going into the first beast, how it was a lion with, uh, with eagle's wings, and it says he'd been given the heart of a man, a uh, heart of a man. It just goes into his pride, you know? Go ahead. If I may add, you know, also with the apostles, and others said that the Great Britain with the mouth. Oh, yeah, Great, Great, Great Britain, too, the water for that. Thank that you. mouth represents Great Britain. Because that's okay. what they really used to colonize America and really... Really bring forth, uh, like the scripture says, uh, her mother should be so in front of her. Mm -hmm. With Babylon the Great coming into existence through spirit, they, they just the seventh came or the eighth came out of the seventh. Mm -hmm. That's right. Out, you know? That's right. Go ahead. It says back in uh, the middle of verse two, and the dragon gave him his power. Now it says the dragon. So this beast we're reading about is talking about 
the, the beast that came after the dragon. All right. But it says the dragon. Shalom, bro. It says the dragon gave him his power. All right. Now, what does that allude to? The influence of the Roman Empire being brought forth on this beast today, which is NATO and the EU pretty much. Okay, just as you had the dragon having seven heads and ten horns, explain the same way to the beast. And the seven heads and the ten horns are really NATO and the EU. All right, even when you go into those regions that those old ten horns was over, over there in that European region, all right, you have those European nations that are in the same area right now. Even when you look at it on the map, it's right. in the same exact area. Yeah, like the same, you know, like Roman Empire, the same, the split, of, the split, split in image, like the exact same thing. You're right, it's, 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 that's right, it's, it's literally the same thing. Right. You know, go ahead, bro. Verse 3, and I, uh, and I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. And I saw one of his heads as it was wounded to death. All right, and that goes into the Roman Empire being brought down. All right, it means going into it being subjugated over those thousand years. All right, and one way to understand that is going into Revelation, the 20th chapter. All right, because that jumps back and forth in time too. But you can read about, all right, that dragon being cast into jail. It says Satan being thrown into jail. But that's going into the dragon that we just read about in Revelation 12. Okay, being brought down for those thousands of years. All right, that's in Revelation chapter 12, verse 7, going into, I'm sorry, 20 and 7, going into that dragon being um, healed pretty much from that wound. Okay, go ahead. And it says, uh, like verse 3. You said something about? Oh. And I saw his head as it was wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. So it wasn't destroyed all the way. All right, because. Paul even talked about it in 2 Thessalonians 2. He, he was coming as after the working of Satan, only he who now letteth will let. All right, until that day is, is revealed pretty much. Right. All right, so they had to still play their part out on the planet Earth. And also on top of that, they had to be wounded. All right, they had to be have a deadly wound. But they was going to resurrect from that deadly wound. Go ahead. And all the world wondered after the beast. Right, right, right. And how did they wonder after the beast? Through his technology. All right, through his policy, the words that he says, the, the, the words that he speaks. All right, even him being resurrected after the Roman Empire, a lot of people are in amazement and astonishment off of it. I mean, look at it from an entertainment standpoint, you know, these the, the, the sports. All right, even when you look at the electronics, okay, I mean, they could say, well, the, the Chinese are already electronics, this and the third, but how is it being instituted and pushed out the way it is, man? Esau, Esau bro. All right, they're the main face to push all this stuff, and they use Jake to advertise it. But they're the mastermind behind all of this. And again, the reason what makes them the mastermind is the blessing that they've received. Because that mindset they had have still comes from the heavens. That's a solution. Shut up, bro. Y'all about to fuck it up. It's that, you said that they're wiser than them. You know that, that's so, it. Right, right. You know, the Lord has it to read as, you know, he, he was going to be in the power to, to be able to implement, you know, this uh, knowledge will increase, if, like like it says in the book of Daniel. So like being able to speak into your phone and say a particular thing, your phone will spit out facts and history about mm -hmm. what happened in the Roman Empire. And you know what I'm saying? Like you asking your phone, hey, blah blah blah, what happened to Nikola Tesla when he was in the science office? And it was like this is what Google, and they'll literally mm -hmm. pull up information. Like you know what I'm saying? That's right. That's Esau over that shit, man. Yeah, that's how the nations marvel at, and they marvel at that by using this technology. By giving the grants to him. Like, mm -hmm. say, Chinese supposed to be behind the tech. Nah, it's Esau. Right, right. The other nations marveled at the fact, like, damn, this motherfucker, they gave a uh, line, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Jesus to him. Yeah. And they're using this technology mm -hmm. and going on forth with it. That's right. It, it makes all much sense why people say America's a corporation. Because right. you can have minds that do this, that, and the third. I mean, those, those yeah. ten horn, those ten toes of that statue, those vassals, they, they, they all had an influence when it came to the rise and the strength of Rome, right, yeah. and you still see it today, but you still have that business mind behind all of it yeah, that yeah. distributes it on how they want it to do. And that just so happens to be America that had fulfilled that. Right. Hey, okay. Freaks. 
Hey, Priest, even when you look, uh, what you got, Silicon Valley. That's like the technology, that's the, that's the mm-hmm. heart, the technology mind of Babylon the Great. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's right. And out of that comes a lot of wicked inventions, a lot of t- AI, Sound virtual Sound reality. Now you Black got, Mirror. Yeah, Black, Black Mirror. Mirror. Now you got the metaverse. Mm-hmm. You Facebook with the metaverse. That's right. Now, 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 now Elon Musk announcing the, the brain chip. You see? It's all coming together. That's, 2020. That's right. They all merging man with machine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's right. Hey, that's why Revelation 18 stands out so much going into the 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 the, the um how can I put this the the delicacies yeah. that it had because it got those from those other nations. You know perfect. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah that, that's yeah. come come. <laughs> we can all um, jump back to Revelation the 13th chapter Revelation. going into that. Revelation 13 and four. And they worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast, who is able to make war with him? Right, right. Just like you read it in Daniel 7, where it talked about that beast, that fourth beast, had, that had great and iron teeth. And it said it stamped the residue of his feet. This dragon came in the same power of that beast. All right, the same power as the Roman Empire. The same influence, pretty much. That's why we call this Rome 2.0. All right, but the reason why it's being expounded now because we read earlier in uh, Revelation 12 going into that wonder that Daniel saw, how he saw a beast having seven heads and ten horns, and then it's written that old serpent. For those of y'all that are coming in here recently, this lesson here today is going into the seed of the serpent versus the seed of the woman. And this lesson broke down on how you can prove according to the scriptures that the seed of the serpent is talking about Esau, Edom today. Because that serpent back in Genesis 3 didn't actually pop out babies. Okay? Everybody that comes from this earth today came from the woman, came from Eve. So there is something in this particular seed of the woman that differentiates us from the rest of the world. Just like the seed of the serpent has something that's in them that differentiates them Mm -hmm. from the rest of the world. And they were going to use this source to rule the planet earth. Esau being from the influence of the spiritual demon Satan. Jacob being from the influence of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh which we're about to rule in righteousness. Okay? That's it on that. We can end it off in 2nd Ezra 6. Yep. You can read it this out. You already quoted it. Or whoever can. Who can pull it up first? God, right, right. This is 2nd Ezra chapter 6 verse 9. Waiting five minutes for a bro to find a precept with another one already got it. <laughs> Jake being humble, holding it and everything. 2nd Ezra chapter 6 verse 9. It says, for Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that follows. That's, that's, that's clear cut to the point. Yep. Okay? The two wonders John saw in Revelation 12 was Jacob and Esau. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay? One was meant to have dominion over the earth for, and, and be a fucking madman until his, time was a, until his time was up. And the next was meant to rule for eternity, starting with Yahweh Shai. That's right. Okay? Yeah. Israel. And that's the time that we're coming into right now. Right. This is the seed of the woman. All right, and Esau being the seed of the serpent. The seed of the serpent was going to have his time, but in his time, his head was going to be broken. All right, then the seed of the woman was going to revive after that Achilles heel injury. All right, that heel, that deadly wound from its heel being risen up. Okay, anybody got any closing points and precepts? Okay, we can end it off there. Lord's willing, this is edifying. We're going to give all praise, all honor, and all glory to Yahweh, Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessing and many salutations unto you, elect, fulfilling your lots in all truth and all sincerity. Shalom. Shalom. That was a good ending.